Spanish crew is hot, always doing you right. With a fresh take on gaming weekly, PCs, consoles, and handhelds. Bump what you heard since birth on this earth. We know that the future belongs to the nerds. Revolve alive. What you say? Revolve alive. Every Sunday at six, bringing that gaming magic to your life. Doing it live on Twitch to show that you don't want to miss. Be sure to subscribe. Crack yourself a brew. If it work, are you who now? You can join the crew for the ride. Xbox, mobile, and hot topics around the nation. To gaming rigs, headsets, hardware, and PlayStation. Shout out to Joe. Can't you see him glow? Token brother, brother, flow. Now it's time for the show. Let's go. go. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past. The future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer. Today I'm joined by the Revolver team, starting with our heavily dressed cast, Briar Rabbit. How you doing this week, my friend? I'm doing awesome. I see you're all ready for the holidays. Yeah, man. Is- I got this really ornate costume on. I'm feeling pretty good about it. What is that? You're looking like... You look like a broke-ass Torbjorn from Overwatch. <laughs> what is that? It's a, it it's a beard, me. man. Uh, 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 it's like are you the, ice the love child, or something? The love child of Torbjorn and Lucio there together. <laughs> look at him. What are you, guys, come on. I'm not making fun of your costumes. I put a lot uh, of work yeah. into this. <laughs> you, know, you know, Briar, if, if you put down your, your uh, razor for a couple of weeks, you can have that costume for real. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I think it looks good. Like, I mean, it's a little... You know, it's a different look for me. That's what I'm saying. Uh, it's actually less facial hair than you normally have. I think. It's true. The line. true. It, when you downgraded your beard, your other beard looked better. Yeah, you know. so, so what you're saying is you shaved for Halloween. Yeah. He found oh, his yeah. razor. Yeah. I knew I you guys were going to making... fucking give me a hard time for this. I thought this was a fucking good costume. But hold on. Hold on. I can switch it up. No. Give me a second. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Give him more effort into his outfit. What? What's he got? I'm so excited to find out. <laughs> For all the audio listeners to this podcast, we currently have Briar Rabbit crouching. Ah! Huh? Oh! Huh? Oh! Huh? There we go. Oh! Right? I'm a Wookiee. You see that? <laughs> I'm like Chewbacca. I lost my glasses though. Oh, I love it. <laughs> And he won't find them for the rest of the episode. Man, that looks awesome. Oh, my God. We need you to get in your car on, and sing to us, Briar. I'm a Wookiee Viking. Oh, God. <laughs> just, these are just stream props that have never been used before. We <laughs> anticipated with the argue. discussion that you and Gary had about Chewbacca and his role in the Millennium Falcon. Very time, yeah. in fact. I think yeah. Briar was speaking from experience. Stuff, yeah. <laughs> Wilson, I'm telling you, man, you look like you're ready to tear some shit up. <laughs> Yeah, How man. Chill, this brother. Week, just friend? chilling. Ready to drink some beers, man. You know what I'm saying? Beer? Good to go. He's yeah, like I mean, this. a weak ass Dr. Disrespect. In fact, you're like Mr. Disrespect. You never quite got the PhD. I'm really <laughs> not supposed to be Dr. Disrespect. It's just supposed to be like a hippie. It started as like a, a Chong costume and like yeah. it came with like these um, like these Harry Potter glasses. I and like I just you. wasn't feeling it, man. So I was like, I'm just going to put my sunglasses on. Put a cigarette in the ear, the bandana, and uh, it looks like maybe, it, maybe related to Willie Nelson or something. <laughs> maybe, or it's just a look at me in the future, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm loving this episode. The Halloween extravaganza, and last but definitely not least, Gary Diaz. How you feeling this week, my friend? And what the I'm hell good. is going on here? I'm afraid. Ooh, it's nice actually to have a week where I don't have to wear makeup, so you're finally seeing the real <laughs> me. You look like you're um, in the insane clown posse. You do. Yeah, where's your Fago? Where's that Fago, dog? I do. I feel like I could I could be in like a, a Mexican drug running cartel, you know, just hitting up the streets. I kinda like it. This this might be my look from now on. This this just it's a it's a strong feel. Well, just thank God you already have a career. <laughs> I think it looks pretty nice. Very, very Dude, becoming. Yeah. Thank Welcome, you. guys, to Revolver Live. Revolver Live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics. You can become a part of the show by submitting your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. That's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash briarrabbit. That's twitch.tv forward slash briarrabbit. 
We also share the video on YouTube at Briar Rabbit's channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. If you're unable to see the live feed, that's today, or the video format, check us out in podcast form on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service provider. And with that said, welcome to the Halloween episode, episode 15 of Revolver Live. Hey. What's going on, guys? And Chewbacca's nose doesn't really fit my glasses that well. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> you look incredible with Racist. the beard coming down off of it. It looks, it plays. <laughs> like I'm loving it, it, Briar. You know, I, I, for some reason I see less of you, but I, I feel like I see more. I feel like I see the bits that matter. You know, yeah. I'm seeing into your soul. It's the twinkle in his eye. You know. <laughs> it's true, actually. Do you know what? Um, Uncraz in the the chat has actually made a point here that. I'm actually celebrating my uh, Latino heritage here. <laughs> it's it's Dio, Dia de los Muertos in in Mexico today. So for all our uh, Mexican listeners, I'm uh, you know solidarity brothers. Fight uh, now, fight the oppressive Northerners. Don't worry. Now, exactly what does this holiday entail, Gary? Because you know I'm African American, which means I don't know anything about anything. What exactly does this holiday do for you guys? What do you guys do? That's really you offensive the... coming from a white alien. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Triggered. <laughs> Definitely a white alien. I don't know how I feel about you putting on white face, Beastly. I'm a little offended. <laughs> Transgender. It's a micro well. aggression. Let's, let's I'm pretty honest. sure. <laughs> Just can, can we can we clarify what bathroom would you actually use now? Because you're a trans alien. Whichever one I want, Gary. Whichever one I want. Now let me ask you a question. Who the fuck is going to stop me? <laughs> would you stop me if I walk into your restroom? Probably With a voice not. like that, probably not, no. Yeah. I, wouldn't go, I, I definitely wouldn't too. stop you. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I'd Briar, probably come on in. Back and watch. You know, I've been wanting an experience with aliens my entire life, and it would be the moment I was in the bathroom and didn't want to deal with aliens. <laughs> that it would happen fair. to you. would be you taking a like big that. dump, and I'd have this awesome moment to like go with E.T., but I'm like, nah. I'm I just busy. reach under the, the stall, Wilson, and hand you the probe. Whoa. Probe yourself. <laughs> Uh, to be fair, I'd probably okay follow you that. into the stall if you look like that. That alien looks hella thick. I can't tell from the uh, below the neck. <laughs> most likely. <laughs> oh my goodness. Welcome so, to the show, guys. We got a great show lined up for you. As always, who would like to get us started with the Halloween episode? Dude, so, I mean, it's no secret what me, Gary, and Briar have been up to, man. We've been playing that, that Destiny 2 on PC. Beastly, you said you haven't got a chance to, to play it yet? I don't look happy right now, do I? <clears throat> no. Let me let, let me change that. I I did not pick it up on PC. I told you guys I would be considering it, and you guys know I'm going to be up, upgrading and and getting me a gaming rig at some point in the near future. I took my hard earned money and bought Mario Odyssey instead, and I gotta say I'm on cloud nine, baby. It's awesome. <laughs> it's incredible. So nice. I, I I feel you guys, and and I'm still enjoying Destiny on my PS4 Pro, and I'm having hell of fun with it. And so in the meantime, I've got two things to go back and forth to, and I'm, I think it was a great purchase. For anybody, Gary, you know what I'm talking about. Mario Odyssey is an incredible game. But I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about Destiny on PC and why I need to buy it ASAP. Right? Right, Gary? Right, right. No, I mean, I, I myself, indeed, before we dive into the Destiny, another game that came out this week I'd severely recommend anyone to pick up is Wolfenstein 2, um, The New Colossus. Fantastic. I've just completed the campaign today. My God, what a game. I tell you, that, that game, if you can't get Viagra on prescription in your area, just play that campaign. That same effect, like now, a flagpole for at least an hour afterwards. <laughs> Let me Hell yeah, this, brother. Guys, for people who don't follow us on Twitter, Gary Diaz has been talking about massive erections about this game for the last 48 hours. Uh, he talked about it in initially starting it up, how he's been on hard. And then as the credits rolled, he said it was even harder. So uh, yeah. I'm really excited to play this game. I mean, I have I've, no problem with erections, but I, I can't wait to try it. I've never felt more like a strong, powerful, independent black woman than when I played that game. So, you know, <laughs> perfect, perfect timing. Um, but yeah, enough of games that aren't Destiny. Destiny 2 on PC, guys, how much fun have we had this week? It's been great, hasn't it? 10 out of 10, man. I mean, like, it's... We should clarify something. It's as far as, like, end game, <clears throat> As far as, like, end game and stuff like that goes, it, it's the exact same game. It just... It's a different feeling sandbox. And the way that the weapons feel, 
the way that the movement feels, all the frames. It's it's awesome. It feels really good. Um, yeah. You know, you point a gun in a direction and pull the trigger, and that's where it shoots. You know, and it's plays just as well with the controller. I've been playing mostly with the controller. Briar and Gary, you know, they're better at uh, keyboard and mouse than I am. A little bit more comfortable than I am on it. So I uh, I've just been using a controller. <laughs> And I use my PlayStation 4 controller. I've been plugging it in. I've been having a damn good time, man. Like, uh, believe it or not, I've been having more fun in Crucible than anywhere else in the game. Because when I get shot or I die, I it's awesome. I never ask myself, well, what the hell was that about? Like, I legitimately feel like I made a mistake and got punished for it. You know, like, it feels there's, fantastic. There's something about it, right? There's the... the uh the you 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 put your head you nailed it right on the head when you said when you shoot it goes where you expect it to it feels like destiny year one or destiny one year one where when you fired a weapon it was satisfying and it felt good whereas you know as they tried to balance all the weapons for the crucible over the years it kind of you know you lost some of that good feel from destiny one and uh over time it got i don't know somewhat diluted but Go into the PC version, it just oh man, it just snapped me right back to year one. Yeah, yeah. Let, it's... let me ask you a question for a guy who's who's not on the PC and unfortunately hasn't had a chance to play with you guys. What level are you guys at? Because this game came out what two days ago. I'm just curious. Uh, I've only got one character, but I'm sitting at 283. I think I can I'm get to 271 on my highest character. Do you have more than one character on PC already? Well, I've made three, but I've only really put any time into one. Wow. I, I'm, I was just, you know, for my own gratification, I know how you guys go so hard in this game. I, I'll definitely be getting it probably closer to the beginning of the year, but mm -hmm. I, I can't I can't wait to try it out. I even know that my, my laptop, this piece of garbage, is able to play that game flawlessly. So I've watched a few videos of people with the same GPU uh, playing it and running it, and it runs really, really well. So if I wanted to get it sooner, I probably can, and and I'll be able to play it here. I, I feel I'm tired of being left behind. Yeah, man, you got to get a rig. Like, and I just want to like clarify something real quick. Like, there's a lot of uh, talks of PC elitists out there and people that you know. Oh, I don't want to hear. It. Like, Briar said it perfectly the other day when it was just yesterday when it was just me and him playing. There's a new shiny thing that we're excited about, and we want to talk about it. And there's a difference between talking about what you're excited about. And being an elitist talking about what you're excited about is what we're trying to do and being an elitist would be us saying that you are not having a good time on console there's no way blah 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 like anyone that says you're not having a good time is being an elitist i jumped back on my console the night before last and did a raid you know what i mean like i still plan on being on my console as much as i can be it's just right now we have this new shiny thing mm -hmm. and we want to we want to talk about it and not only do we want to talk about it we want Bungie to know that we're excited about it and that we want as much of those changes as we can to be brought forward to console. Now, obviously, we're not talking frame rates and things like that because the hardware is already being pushed pretty hard. But what I would like to see is sandbox updates where I'm not fighting my gun like I am on console. The recoil of my weapon, like uh, it's very punishing. It's not... The weapons are fun, but now that I've had the experience that I've had on PC and I can see what, how much fun these weapons could be. I want that on console. And like, I'm not trying to be one of those. I know what's best for console players because I'm also a console player. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm trying to juggle both here. You know, it, it's tough, but you know, I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. Like that. We're not trying to be like super elite about the subject or anything. We're just excited. Well, as a console gamer, I appreciate that comment. Uh, Wilson, that's, that that makes people like me feel a lot better. I know you guys aren't PC elites, but I know a lot of people would hear, you know, a conversation about a game that's been out for a while coming to PC and think, oh my God, I'm on console. These guys are rubbing it in. And like I said to you guys on Twitter, I know that the PC version is by far the best version. And it's it's it it really has a lot more to offer as far as the way you can play the game, the way it's perceived. And uh I'm happy you guys are here to talk about it. I've been having a lot of fun just learning mouse and keyboard too. Like getting into PvP. I've never really played competitive games well i have but it was like 15 years ago <laughs> but playing uh playing the crucible with the mouse and keyboard has been it's fun to have 
like a uh, like feel like I'm making progress in my own skill set, like game to game. That's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I was watching you play earlier, and you're really nailing the shots with a hand cannon as well. Like you can see the progression in your play. Like you know, you can see those those um, cogs starting to tick, you know, and and, and all the gears like starting to turn, and you know, you're starting to slip back into that mouse and keyboard. There, it's, it's good to watch because it's nice to see that evolution in people's play style. Uh, it's myself, been a lot of fun. The, the biggest thing that I've really liked about it, and it's a really trivial thing, it's not the game in itself, it's the fact that I can just boot up my PC in the morning and I've got all the games that I normally play on Steam and on Battle.net, and then Destiny's just right there. I don't have to get the second monitor going, I don't have to get the controller, or I don't play with the controller, but I don't have to do that. For me, as a PC player, it's so nice to have it all in one place. Uh, and that's what, you know, for me has been a real utility fix coming from a you know i bought a console exclusively for destiny i've played other console games but i would not have bought a console had it not been for destiny one so yeah for me it, it just feels like destiny's home for me so I mean, it sounds cheesy but it's it's kind of true so what you're saying is you're really just excited that you don't have to adjust your monitor stand which is for those who don't know is your playstation 4 pro <laughs> i kid you not my ps4 pro is currently propping up the left monitor um it's it's just sitting there doing nothing i mean you know i'm not bagging on console it's just not where i play you know, i've got no no uh, reason to go back that's there you now. man that's cool that's your identity and you should you should hold to that. You know what I mean? We joke around about you being a PC elitist and stuff like that. And it's really it's not a joke. It's, it's really, just, <laughs> it's really all just, just in fun, man. You know what I mean? Like it's, but like, dude, it's great, man. And if anything, I want a lot of these changes to come over to console. And I want some of these, some of these people to experience this stuff. Cause it feels so damn good. I believe, um, Gary, you had tried dropping the game down to 30 frames. 35 yeah. frames or whatever and dude you went you had like a double digit kd by the end of the game and briar i gotta commend you too man your skills are getting better on keyboard dude because i was using controller all day and like you were you were crushing it dude like we, we had a really good day of uh crucible today man as long as i don't have to use any keys except for wasd i'm okay You're good as soon as I have to move my fucking left hand somewhere else, I'm like, oh, it's all over. And once everything gets close range, it's like, it's all just a mess of, I can't do the controls. And I'm I'm at a stage before that, Briar. I feel like WASD, I fuck it up. Yeah. So, I'm yeah, I, I honestly, I probably in my entire life put three or four hours into PC gaming. Well, you That's can use that controller. That's one of the nice things. It's like Wilson yeah, was saying. But if, you can definitely if I'm going to invest controller. some real money into a PC, I want to learn how to play a PC the way people play PC. So yeah, that's something I'll be definitely getting into. Yeah. Well, yeah. Man, and like, for you I, when you're ready. <laughs> yeah. I have this thing where like, if I started a game on mouse and keyboard, like Fortnite, for instance, I can't use a controller on Fortnite because I started with mouse and keyboard, uh, with destiny. I obviously started with a controller and for whatever reason, man, I just like, <sighs> I just, it's hard for me, dude. It's really tough. And then I have this competitive nature to where, like, this guy, like, just totally, oh, he derped almost as many shots as I did. And I'm like, man, if I would have had my controller, I would have got that guy. And next thing you know, I'm pulling my controller out and and plugging it in. I can't help it, man. Going but, for what you know. Yeah. It is what I it is. Use whatever. Don't apologize. And <laughs> that's a controller for me. So, uh, Wilson, is that something you're going to continue to do? Or are you gradually trying to move over to... Let's Mouse be real. Keyboard. I'm lazy. Probably not. Who would ever think you guys are lazy by these these costumes? I'm telling you. You know how long it took my... me to grow these <laughs> horns? Hey. <laughs> just in my nature, man. Like sometimes, like I mean, like there's there's some games I do like the you know <clears throat> sitting forward at attention at my computer doing the mouse and keyboard stuff. You know, Daisy, Fortnite, uh, PUBG. Stuff like that. I love being focused. But a game Front like Destiny, center. sometimes I kind of like to lean back and relax in my chair and, and yeah. just play some games. And then until I get into the Crucible, and next thing you know, the the elbows are on the knees leaning forward. And <laughs> I think that's what Destiny is always going to be for me moving forward is that sometimes I'll be you know trying my hardest and I'll be leaning forward, whether with a... With a controller, if I'm at my desk, I'll be using a mouse and keyboard. Other times, my feet are going to be up. I'll be leaning back, whether that's on my couch or right here in my office, with my and with a controller in my lap, just kind of taking it easy for running public events. You know, I don't need to 
precision or you know the the responsiveness of a mouse you know i just find it so so bewildering that you guys find a controller so adept like you know this week i spent 200 dollars on a lap board so that i can sit on the couch and still have <laughs> keyboard and mouse input yeah um, you know for, for me i just i i'm so much more comfortable well, we've got as three as... years into destiny on a controller it's just it's it's so natural right it's like you don't have to think about inputs it's really? just it's it's hardwired into our brain at this point and, and for people like me uh gary i never even dabbled with a keyboard mouse and keyboard until i was in my late teens late teens and i wasn't even playing video games that was back when kazaa came out <laughs> you know I, I never had a computer in my house. We were very poor growing up, uh, and we had consoles and we had controllers our whole lives growing up. And so when I finally turned 35 and I was able to buy, I'm just kidding. When I was old <laughs> enough to buy a computer, I, um, you know, it was a foreign land for me. And it, for me, it's just as weird to hear someone like you, Gary, say how adept you are at mouse and keyboard, when people like me have never had a chance or an inkling of what it was like to play games on mouse and keyboard. So we're in, you know, complete polar opposites when it comes to that mentality. You know what the, you know what the problem for me is with mouse and keyboard is <clears throat> when I play on controller, I'm once, I'm always thinking about the move ahead of my next move. Mm -hmm. So I'm never just going somewhere blindly. I'm always thinking if I go there, what lanes do I have to worry about? How am I going to get out if it doesn't work out? The problem with mouse and keyboard is, yes, I will fumble for a key from time to time. I've got a map on my mouse now, which is which is really awesome. Um, helps a lot. But I find myself not thinking in advance about the next step. And it's just because I'm in such a foreign, unfamiliar yeah. uh, state of mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wardrobe malfunction here with the mustache. Uh, <laughs> just just, just like Janet it. Jackson. <laughs> oh, um, it was an accident, I swear. Uh, but like, yeah, it, oh, it, and that's something that I need to work on. But unfortunately, I know myself. I'm just like, why would it's a lot of time for me to put into something when I could just plug a controller in, get my satisfaction and move on to the next thing. That's that's the, the way of being a man. You stick it in, get your satisfaction and keep on moving. I, I like that. Mm. That thinking, Wilson. Five kids. Remember that. Five. Do it till you're satisfied. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I, I I might look like I'm crazy today because I keep smiling, but every time I look around and look at you guys, it's like <laughs> looking at these fucking costumes for the first time. <laughs> it's so silly. Hey, hey, man. Hey. I am but, sweating uh, like a pig in here, man. It is hot. <laughs> it's like your so, your forehead is like in an oven right now. That's right. A little, <laughs> Viking <laughs> helmet. We've they call been them Vikings for a reason. We've been talking about the PC and uh, the, the immense and untapped power that it's got, but we've been blind to the real true power that's approaching us in the next week, uh, and that is the mighty, the unstoppable Xbox One X. Do we have any pre-orders going for this thing? Is anyone excited at all? Is anyone even watching the launch did you know it was coming up next week what do we think is is xbox still sustainable as a brand is that the thing is that just like a more expensive usb port for me man is that what that is <laughs> phil That's spencer harsh. you've done him dirty That's there wilson <laughs> like, Damn. I, I mean I, it, it's it's a cool concept like i get it like if you are through and through a console player man like i'm not gonna bash it the people that want to buy it and have fun on it you know that's really cool um my personal advice with, with the whole thing is i'd rather put that 500 bucks towards a pc build man <clears throat> that's just me you know like with the way things are going in games like a lot of people are getting into pc gaming a lot of people are trying it out a lot of people are discovering games that they would have never discovered before and uh to be honest like if you've already got an xbox one you i really uh, me personally i wouldn't see the reason to to get one you know I did hear, uh, I can't remember who told me this in chat uh, the other day, but the best reason I heard to buy an Xbox One over a PC or Xbox One X over a PC was that it upgrades all the games you already have instead of having to buy all new games for your PC, which I thought that actually resonated with me pretty well, right? It's like, 
not all the games, but like if you already have Gears of War and you already have Halo and you already have, you know, you're planning on buying Forza and you, you know you have this library of games, and a lot of them are just gonna like get an upgrade and be better because you bought new hardware, and that's pretty cool, you know. It is actually that's a that's a fair I didn't point. Know I didn't that. thought of that. I mean, if that's you've dope. got a lot of them digitally and they're on Play Anywhere then you have got them on your PC anyway as soon as you purchase a PC if you're moving from Xbox That's and fair a digital too. collection. That is fair. You, you do have them, um, which is kind of nice. But I didn't think of, you know, if you're, if you're a physical collector and you've just got gear sitting there, then, yeah, you know, or Halo 5 sitting there because you can't play Halo 5 on the PC. So I guess it's got its market. But, I mean, do we think that Phil really is the saviour that we thought he was or is he just, you know, I- playing as the fiddle that we, we need to hear right now? Let me just say this, all right? Um, over the last few weeks, I've been seeing more and more videos on the Xbox One X. Of course, Digital Foundry, shout out from Beastly Gamer. Uh, and the gamer in me, the guy who always wants the newest, shiniest object, has been crying out silently inside. And of course, it's a it's a huge amount of money for something that's relatively, that doesn't really change up things too much, but it is the best. The games that they've shown that have been multi-plats look uh, you know, much better than they do on the the PlayStation 4 Pro. And to me, that's a reason for me, you know, just being the kind of guy I am to at least look at this thing. Uh, I have a nice little collection of Xbox One X, I mean, Xbox One games, and a majority of them would see those uh, upgrades that you guys mentioned by getting the X. And that's really where I've been. Uh, I told you guys pre-show that I kind of have been regretting not getting a pre-order, even though I got a lot of other things to do because I'm seeing the power of this thing and I'm, I'm wondering what they'll do, but that's another big question. It's a big chasm to leap because right now there's really nothing new coming out for it. That's that the really biggest justifies problem the purchase. in my opinion. Yeah. It's like there's, there's two things that I find interesting coming to that console this year. And I think they're both coming this year is uh Forza looks pretty dope. Like that thing's yeah. running at 60 frames per second, second at, I think a native 4k and it looks yeah. amazing. Um, but on the other side of the thing, if I'm going to buy a racing game right now, I'm much more attracted to uh, Gran Turismo that's got a VR mode because, to me, that's that's more next level than 4K. Um, the other one is PUBG. I'm really interested to see what that's going to look like on the Xbox One X. Oh, yeah. However, I got I got questions how that game actually performs with a, you know, a controller just because yeah. you're so often trying to get such precise aim at such long distances. Like how do they handle, you know, how do they handle that? Is there going to be just like a buttload of aim assist that reaches out for, you know, a quarter mile? Like how are they going to do that? It's, it's a big question to me. And you mentioned Forza. Um, Forza's on the play anywhere. So as long as you buy Forza 7 Digital, you've got that on PC. Yeah. PUBG's already there. So I struggle to see where the exclusives are outside of the Halo series. Yeah. You know, I played Gears 4 on PC. I didn't play it on the Xbox. Uh, Cuphead, I'm playing it on the PC, mm-hmm. uh, which was a fantastic game, but again, not an Xbox exclusive. So, yeah. The I mean, only one I really know of is Halo. Is there any yeah. other? Um, I think Gears of War is on PC now too, right? Yeah, Gears, yeah, and you can play Ultimate Edition. Um, <sighs> God, they are really so the the, the remake, themselves. the remake of the first one, and Gears Four both on PC. Well, you now PC, hold on, because PC is also a Microsoft platform. Yeah, but it doesn't help their console business very much. Prior. No, it doesn't. And That's why my question really is about the is the Xbox brand really, you know. Is it a sustainable brand? Should they even be sustain- sustaining it? Like, is it worth, like, holding on to? Like, I don't want mm-hmm. them to get rid of it. D- don't get me wrong here. I want there to be at least two s- strong competitors in the console business. Arguably, there's three right now, which is even better. Um, Absolutely. But, like, when I look at the moves they're making, like, I mean, this is the first time in a couple of generations where I haven't, I haven't really wanted to own all the all the consoles, you know, because I just don't see a reason on the Xbox. PlayStation has all the exclusives, which, you know, draw me back to the PlayStation. But on the Xbox side, I've just, you know, I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, why? Why? And, and, and it's a it's a very bitter pill to swallow when you think about it. And, and you know, over the years, I've tried to step away from my, my partisan antics when it comes to 
PlayStation over Xbox. I've embraced the Xbox. I've played the Xbox. But when it comes down to it, you know, having an Xbox One, I play it maybe point five percent you know uh yeah. compared to the time that i'm spending on the playstation because a majority of the games that i play on ps4 or playstation are exclusives and you know especially with my setup sometimes i just turn on my xbox just to see if there's anything on it that and if you me. have a pc then the multi-plat you know i don't care how powerful the xbox is my two thousand dollar pc is more powerful <laughs> you know yeah. like <laughs> and you can access um xbox home from your PC dashboard as well, and you can check the store. You can check to see if anything new has come out. You don't have to turn on the Xbox to have access to all of the Xbox features. So, again, if you're invested in the Microsoft ecosystem, it really diminishes. I think, I mean, arguing argue devil's advocate, I guess if you don't have a PC and you're staring at PlayStation or Xbox and you've built up a friends list on 360 that have maintained and transitioned, mm -hmm. then I think this is the best version of the Xbox definitely yeah. the best version of the xbox they've ever had and arguably the best console out at the moment um yeah. i, I can agree with five hundred dollars that, that, that's my biggest problem five hundred dollars well, when, when the ps3 came, came out it was like 600 bucks or something yeah, like it was, that man 600 and okay. they, they suffered for that too yeah they did <laughs> they suffered <laughs> major I mean, i'm just thinking consumer electronics okay we're in a we're in a space where I guess a lot of game stores are offering credit. They're offering pay over a, a set period, you know, and people are comfortable with dropping like a thousand dollars on an iPhone uh, 10. You know, people are looking at spending more on consumer electronics. There'll be a line outside the store to buy them. I bought an iPhone 8. You know, I think if people want that product, they will find means to do it, whether it's an upfront cash purchase or whether it's finance or, you know, using a catalog purchase or something of that nature. I don't think the cash is going to be the prohibitive factor. I just think, like you say, people are objecting based on the library of games. Um, but for some people, I think it's going to be the best possible news they could have had if they're really invested in the Xbox brand and franchise. Um, but the, as you say, Briar, the real question is, are we going to see them go the way of Sega? Do you think that Microsoft need a console? I I don't know. You know, I don't know. Do they? It, it, it'll be worse than Sega. I think because consumers Microsoft... need it. We need it. I was just going to say that because <laughs> we need competition. If we let it, Sony it... fucking own the fucking console space, we're in deep shit. Well, look, <laughs> we've seen yep. that before. We saw it during the PS2 for, and then, you know, they were making some decisions that were pretty anti-consumer at the time. I mean, my thoughts on it are this. Um, Microsoft has built up a huge fan base. There are over 80 million Xbox 360s sold. These people have bought into the Xbox brand. Look at the Xbox One. Probably 35 million sold right now. Uh, for them to go belly up, it would it cripple the industry, in my opinion. I mean, look how bad uh, what happened to Sega was viewed by the public and by their their followers and people who supported the company. I think that um, I think that the Xbox needs to be here, uh, and, and Gary is absolutely right. Uh, you know, right now the Xbox One X is the most powerful and and probably best home console, but it's a day late and a dollar short. It's a it just doesn't have the, the game library, man, to, to pull and me really, in. And really, that's what you need? It needs something that. that capitalizes on the hardware. Because Ooh. hear me out. If they had a baller lineup of games, one of two things is going to happen. Either people are going to buy it and enjoy it, or they're going to buy it, and this could potentially revolutionize how consoles are built in the future. You know, nobody saw that shit coming with the Wii being as successful as it was with motion controls and things like that might not sound like a good idea to us right now where we have upgradable potentially upgradable parts on our console which is creeping closer and closer towards a pc build but for all we know i mean if they had a good lineup of games or there is a good lineup of games that we don't know about this could potentially be the new biggest thing and if it does have you know if you could say upgrade the graphics card on it the next time the new one comes out or even a processor or something like that that's just getting you that much more like comfortable towards the day that you potentially do want to build a pc you know what i mean because like i remember the first time i had to deal with like putting graphics cards and things like that in my computer i was terrified but like the more you do it the more you get comfortable with it i really i want it to succeed i really do that's the thing i don't well, want this thing to flop i want it to succeed but i just don't i see a really big gun with not many bullets in it 
this is yeah. this is Microsoft's yeah. biggest problem. Their biggest problem is themselves. They compete with themselves in so many ways by releasing their games in different places to play, even with the Xbox One X. See, I don't Every see that game, as a problem, man. Like at, you're just giving people, you're giving people yeah, choices, let, and that's great. Me, the problem is that problem. there's no fucking games, man. When's the last time they released a fucking game? Well, look, this would solve a lot of problems for Microsoft. The Xbox One X is going to play Xbox One games. If they release games exclusively for the Xbox One X, it would make that console more attractive to gamers. It would give people a reason to buy it. People who have the Xbox One and they see a, an upgraded version of Quantum Break, that's not really an exciting reason to get out and buy an Xbox One X. But if you see a game that is tailor-made for the power of the Xbox One X, it looks leaps and bounds better than anything on ps4 or xbox well it's or, not or it's not gonna look leaps and bounds well i mean it's not leaps I've and seen, bounds more powerful well, it something does look better something it looks better made, but it's not like tailor-made for the xbox one x would look i think a lot better than it would on ps4 the other thing we need to do is step outside of our perspectives here and I'm just going to, I have no facts or data to back this up, so I'm just going to go on supposition and guesswork, which serves me well in the past. This is really informed. When you walk into GameStop, 50% of the store, gem, uh, it's not going to be exactly that, because obviously you've got Nintendo and stuff, but one wall of the store will be PlayStation. One wall of the store will be Xbox. And that's been consistently true in every retail store I've seen. They're still giving up the same shelf space, both PS4 and Xbox. What I'm saying is if the Xbox games weren't selling to the general consumers at that rate, you'd probably see less shelf space available for the Xbox. I think the average gamer, who isn't people like us who are scrutinising the exclusives, that buys maybe two to three games a year that's like Madden, um, and, and you know NBA 2K, FIFA, whatever, Call of Duty, it doesn't matter where they buy it. It's the same game. They're going to buy it on the Xbox or the PlayStation. It's irrelevant to them. They're probably not picking up the PlayStation exclusives because they don't really care about them because all their friends are going to play FIFA until the end of time and COD because that's what the general casual audience is made up of. Those games sell like gangbusters every single year across every platform. That's true. So I think that Xbox are probably in... You say they don't have games, they don't have anything else... It's not like PlayStation have like exclusive FIFA or NBA 2K or Madden. If they had that, you know, there'd be a real problem. I think as long as you've got the staples, things like Assassin's Creed, FIFA, Madden, etc. I don't see Xbox being in any issue. And I think the retailers will be your first indication of danger. As long as they're giving up half of their store to Xbox, you know that they're still selling Xbox games. I bet you're right. Opinions, opinions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I... I, I think you make a good point there. I mean, there there's maybe a handful, like not even a handful of exclusives on PlayStation. And I do think that it is very important to play where your friends are and continue to play where your friends are. <clears throat> the reason why I want Microsoft to do so good is because that'll encourage Sony to do better. And then once Sony does better, then Microsoft has to do better. You know, yep. the, the the consumer is what benefits the most when two companies have Could competition. Be. Yep. You guys remember the old school Sega versus SNES debate? That yes, shit was heated. It's still heated. Yeah. To this day, that debate is still going on. You know what I mean? And that was one of the greatest time periods to sell consoles when there was all that hype generated around it. And I just want to see. I just want to see some competition between the two, so that they uh, inspire each other to work a little harder, work a little better, make a little more money. You know. So, do you guys think that, at its current state, the Xbox One is giving Sony any? Re I mean, Xbox One X is giving the console competition anything to really be worried about? Do you think that the Xbox One X won't drive sales? Do you think that PlayStation and PlayStation it's, Four Pro uh, are worried shits. about what it's going to do? It is shit all over the PS4 Pro. So, of course, yeah. it has to. The PS4 yeah. Pro's marketing was the most powerful console on the market. You know, the, the big, you know, the pro gamers come here. The pro gamers have something. They can't do that. They have to say, we have the second best console. Yep. We've got the PlayStation 4, um, which is better than the base Xbox. And we've got the Pro, which is worse than the One X. So, yeah, it, must, well, it has really interfered with their marketing message. Because what is the Pro? The Pro is like the middle range car. You know, you, you don't get the full sport model if you buy yeah, a but, console. Yep. You know. It, it, with respect, uh, Gary, at the time, the PlayStation 4 Pro was the most powerful console. That's and right saying. now, 
and now the Xbox One X is, and then they'll have to step down when something else comes out. I think that's just evolution in the in the gaming console generations. Yeah, but if you know, walk if into they a keep gaming one store, up, one up in each other year after year, then it, I mean, who's going to really have investment? Like, well, I'm going to buy this five hundred dollar console because it's going to be the best console for the next year. I don't know year. <laughs> Yeah, the, they got to do... It's a scary concept. I mean, that's something that we deal with uh, as PC gamers. Like, if you want to be on the bleeding edge of the next graphics card, a lot of people... I mean, it is roughly a year, you know, and the next one comes yeah. out. You know, a lot of... The good thing about it is, you know, you take care of your stuff, whether that's a graphics card or a console. They do generally, if you sell at the right time, they do hold some of their value but you got to strike when the iron's hot if you wait too long the once the newer thing comes out it just depreciates the value of the previous model but it it does kind of feel like the evolution but i think it's i think they're kind of moving too fast and i do think that the xbox one x is a way superior thing than the ps4 pro if you want to know my true opinion about the ps4 pro i think it's a fucking joke I really do. Ooh. I think it's a joke, dude. I think it was a fucking gimmick. I think it was a rush to show who had the bigger swing and dick at the current time. I really do. I literally think it was thrown together very shortly before the reveal, before they announced it. Like, I think it was just a flash in the pan idea and they rolled with it and it worked for them for a little bit. And I think Microsoft actually took the time to develop something worthy of saying that it is the, the successor yeah. the successor or the best like if I'd you're be, gonna call it I, i'd be surprised if the the decision to make the ps4 pro came from the playstation division of my of sony i wouldn't be surprised if that decision came from a higher power who was trying to sell tvs too because mm. you know you get this PlayStation oh, yeah. pro, f pro out there with the 4k and the hdr and all of a sudden, well, I kind of want a TV to go with that. And they're showing it off on these Sony Vega TVs. And also, there's a compelling reason to buy 4K because that's one of the big things about 4K TVs is there's no fucking content out, to, out there. They look beautiful. They're wonderful TVs, except there's nothing to watch on it. Yeah. You know I love a good, good conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? Walmart yeah, tunnels. Walmart yeah. tunnels. And they're selling them at Walmart. <gasps> <laughs> holy shit okay we gotta revisit that one but i mean like i do and like with it said and done you know like i do even though i don't really play on xbox i think it's a superior product and i want it to do well man i really do i want i want it to sell well and them have good games for it and if they do look better i mean it's i'm not gonna lie it's tempting man like i i, I love new toys and things like that it's just right now i'd just rather invest that stuff into my pc currently i want it's just bad timing to, for me to be financial incentive for sony and microsoft to make more powerful consoles right because i was a little disappointed with both the xbox one and the ps4 when they initially debuted it's like mm -hmm. these aren't that much more powerful than what i've been playing on for the last how long was the xbox 360 nine years out? Like for nine years, I was like, "This is an upgrade, but it's not a huge upgrade." Do you think the Xbox One X is the upgrade that we should have had? That should have been the baseline model for the successor to 360 and PS3. I think it would have been too expensive at the time. If it's five hundred dollars now, what would it have been three years ago? Probably Ooh. like eight, seven. Ooh, I don't want to think seven, about that. Seven, seven, yeah, eight. The Xbox yeah. One was five hundred dollars. So, oh, yeah, yeah. hundred dollars just for the connect. It was expensive, man. Yeah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> Thank God, though, I bought one because I've gotten a lot of use out of that. Well, they, the connect. The connect. They, they just canceled, <laughs> they're no longer being manufactured. So, hold on to that collector's item, sir. That's right. That's right. I got one of the few of the many. <laughs> and if you sort of hacks come the out many, for it, they sold 36 million of those. So, the connects for the Xbox One. So, they did move a lot of them, but you can find them in a pawn shop for about 30 bucks now. You well, do you one. think that's because a lot of them were included with the? Because I remember when the Xbox One first came out, I didn't buy it specifically because of the price that it was, and it came with the Connect. Um, and then later they started selling a model that didn't have the Connect. So do you think some of those numbers can be kind of cheesed in a sense that you? They, were... they absolutely can. Yes. Did Many they of include those were... the the original Connect for the 360 in that number? No, they're talking about the 
connect from the Xbox One. Ah. Okay. So 36 million. It's a lot of damn connects that people didn't want to use. And Briar, you said you got a lot of use out of yours. I would have paid money oh to see God. you using that. Oh, yeah. Tons <laughs> of use. I mean, our first yeah. our first podcast together was films on the connect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Yep. Yeah. How many times did you say Xbox on in the, uh, the time? Oh, you, you just it? turned on my Xbox. Damn it. Um, <laughs> Xbox, Xbox on. Xbox off. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to sleep. Damn. Xbox, you're drunk. Troll. <laughs> I'd be the first one to say that it's just a bad idea to have a console that does that block. for yeah. that's like that's like borderline like uh built in next control. level parental control. No man, parental control. If I'd have been eight years old and my dad came into my room and or my mom came into my room and said <laughs> Xbox off, I would have went full flip shit mode. Uh, midway through a trolls card as well. Hey Brian. Right? Brian, do you remember um during the uh playing Call of Duty on the Xbox One uh, a few years ago. I think it was Call of Duty Ghost. It may have been the one that came out after that. It, it actually may have been after Ghost. But someone's name on Xbox Live was Xbox One Off. Oh, yeah, that's right. Do you remember? <laughs> yeah. How fucking crazy was that? Yeah, that was hilarious. That was a great news story. <laughs> yeah. So if you yelled at, out his name, like to call him out to your teammates, your shit, your, is your shit would turn off. <laughs> Smart oh, man. Hell no. I didn't even think Smart of that until you just registered that. That would have been me. <laughs> I would have been that guy. God damn it, Xbox One off. What are you doing? Oh, wait, no. Smart man. Right. Yeah, Dude, that's smart. almost as good as Gary uh, trolling uh, Briar's uh, stream through uh, the Blizzard chat because your text <laughs> messages show up in the bottom yes. corner. And what was Gary was inciting a riot in chat? He was telling him to say shit. It was pretty good. Perfect, dude. That I don't was... have any fucking idea that it's going on either. Even though it's on the screen I'm looking at, I have no fucking idea. Yeah, the thing is you can put little arrows on it as well because it comes up where Briar's positioned his camera. Uh, the chat comes up right next to it. You can say things like, ask this man about a bag of dicks and put an arrow next to it. And it just comes up. It's great. That's so wrong. Oh, it's, it's great. It's good that was like Angelina Jolie, like uh, the, the Hackers movie from the 90s. That was awesome. You're like zero cool. It was, just, that was acid burn or my, zero uh, cool. My retro hacker movies, I prefer the Jackman classic of Swordfish. That's the one that I uh, oh, go God. to. Now, uh, I've got to take Hackers over. Hackers is older. Hackers is older, though. Is it? Yeah. Guys, have, you, have you seen that movie? I Hackers haven't. Is old I'm, as hell. Google it. Put it in your queue. You will love it, and we'll talk about it. It is awesome. It. I, got, I got to take over as Gary Diaz, who normally keeps us on queue. We've covered approximately one of our major topics for today's episode, and we are already 50, 50 minutes in. So we're going to move over to the next topic, which is... The greatest fears. Whose topic was this? This was mine. Let's so, get it. So whether it's in real life or gaming, what are some of your greatest fears? They could be subconscious fears. Uh, within gaming, it could be a certain particular moment um, in gaming that, that frightened you. Or <clears throat> So I'll start. So subconscious fear is an easy one for me. Um, when I sneeze, I hold it in. Because I have this subconscious fear that the moment I just let this sneeze fly, that somebody's going to be right fucking next to me and I'm going to sneeze on them. And that is like the worst <laughs> thing ever. Like I used to ride to work with my cousin every day and I'd when I'd sneeze and he'd be like, dude, let it go. Release the fury, man. It feels so much better. And I'm Thank like, God. dude, like the windows open and I could have like sneezed on. And he's like, is that your thing? And I'm like, yeah, man. Like, I just don't want to like just cut loose on someone and germ them up like. It's that's a that's a big one. Um, it's a considerate fear, man. You care so much for your fellow man. You're fearful of it. Like, how embarrassing would it be if you're just standing in line for something and and then you look over and you just sneeze on like some little old lady or just anyone and just. It's all right. It was it was her time. It was her time. Her time. Selection. She's experienced everything in life except getting sneezed on by a random hippie in the gas station. Um. Fair enough. Um, a gaming fear, or I'm sorry, real life fear of mine. Um. It's pretty simple. Um, spiders, fucking hate them. I cannot stand spiders. I know a lot of people are like, oh, snakes are so much worse. Here's my argument to that. Mm -hmm. When is the last time a snake sought you out in your home to fuck with you? <laughs> When's the last time a spider did that? That's happened. Every fucking times. day. 
every fucking time there's one <laughs> in the room, time. dude. They have eight. Uh, what do they have? Like nine eyes, eight oh eyes. I don't know. God. It's terrifying, dude. They have poison. They have flesh eating bacteria and they like to fuck with you while you sleep. I don't have snakes coming into my house, like trying to curl up with me at night, like getting warm. I have, however, woken up before with spider bites. I had this nasty one on my arm when I was Jeez. in high school, dude. I had to go to uh, dude it. It was like a big boil. It looked like this. Oh. Dude, it was like swelled up. It was really bad, man. He said it could have been a uh, like. It's a good thing I went to the doctor, man, because it could have been a fucking or something. no brown brown, brown recluse with that flesh eating fucking bacteria, man. Yeah, I'll, hell, I'll fuck know. one of those in the face. Dude, that's what that, I'm saying, dude. These things live under nail. your house right now. Under your house. I didn't know you were Not my house, from like Bolivian rainforest <laughs> or something. What the fuck sort of insects do you guys have? We have, we like, have real insects. We have American what? insects that don't fuck around. Do you, know, do you know what we have in England? We have pigeons. Pigeons is about as good as the fucking wildlife we've got. Yo, pigeons Wait, that's carry a lot that's of dangerous pet. bacteria. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, man. Squirrels. Uh, the squirrels, pigeons, um... The, the occasional rabbit. That's about Rabbits it. can be dangerous. That's... You ever see Search for so Holy Grail? L- look at the rabbit on the <laughs> podcast. He looks like he's ready to fuck some shit up. I'm about yeah, ready man. to pass out. Shit. It's so fucking hot in this office right now. <laughs> um, I, I mean, bet you if you take off your, your Viking hat, it looks like you've been in the shower. <laughs> I mean, uh, this morning, sure I, I, does. Found a, I found a centipede near oh the front door. But it was like a very small one. I picked it up and put it outside. That was about as scary as the bugs are in the UK. We don't really have anything. It's nothing... Uh, Nothing that most, can hurt you, at least. Most terrifying thing I've ever experienced. And I've been bit by dogs, 198 stitches, all this shit. Most shit. terrifying thing I've ever That's gone shit. through was I woke up one morning and I went to what I call the porcelain throne, which is the toilet. And I went to mm. do my thing. And I this was back in my parents' house back in the day. And I something just didn't feel right man and i did i was like something just doesn't feel right and i flushed the toilet and i shit you not dude this spider that was like legs and all like that big around <clears throat> was just hanging on the inside of the toilet bowl because i flushed it and whoop, down it went whoa i almost Good i almost, time I, almost had to poop, I almost had to poop outside after that <laughs> I'm not even kidding. You you. I'm not even kidding you. That was terrifying. Do you know the psychological effect of every time you potentially sit down on the toilet that something's trying to the fuck you up? The spider gonna bite me in the ass. It's a very vulnerable <laughs> position because you've got like your your junk hanging limp, just down, oh, gracing yeah. the water. I mean, you're kind of presenting it to anything that wants to attack. It's not. It's not a good look. It's not yeah, a good look. It's not. A, you're very. You're. You're at your most vulnerable when you have your pants down on the toilet. Yeah. Yeah. Look what happened to I mean spoilers. <laughs> what happened to, to Tyrion Lannister's dad? Whoa, right. you know. Whoa, big spoilers. Um, but uh <laughs> and if I had to say gaming fears, um <clears throat> this is gonna sound kind of cheesy. Just letting my team down, man. Like PvP. I don't want to be that person who makes the mistake or I goes, have no such fear. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> call that shameless. Uh but uh, my man, uh, you know, and it sounds cheesy, but like I want to try to do my best to when we are trying to win. There's obvious times that we're fucking around, but like there's times that, um, you know, I, I'm like, I want to go flawless just because of the, you know, I just want to go flawless this weekend. And yeah. if you guys are really my friends, you would help me go flawless one day. <laughs> then let's do it. I'll, it when it comes mm-hmm. back and it, it's been taken away for a while now because of that emo. Yeah, it's just not, just it's not hit me up with your um your battle net ID and we'll we'll sort something out. It's fine. I'm talking to everyone here except the elitist. Never yeah, mind. <laughs> Gary's talking about the doing elitist is probably the best one among us all. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But like, uh, yeah, just letting my team down or going full tilt and being toxic, you know, because like I'm guilty of it. It's happened. We're only human. Um, just anything that overall brings the mood of the team down or prohibits. Potential success. Damn, that's a lot of weight to carry. I just try to have a good time. I do too, man. But sometimes I want to fucking win. Like I said, sometimes I get super alpha male and I just want to win. I don't know what it is about some teams, but sometimes I'm just like... I see a a guy teabag, me or one of my teammates, and it's like... It's go mode. Like I don't. Yeah. I get ultra fucking serious. <laughs> white knight, you know Man. me, Briar. The white knight yeah. bagger, dude. Yeah, I will. I, I, find, <laughs> I don't even care if they're teabagging for me. Like you saw it happen the other day. I find if someone's got like some sort of hateful or like racist or sexist shit in their yeah. like clan tag or something else, I then go out of my way to try to like 
punish that dude for being such a dick like that for me is like the big thing like you know if you've got some hateful shit in your clan tag that you think is funny it's just like nah man you, we can't be allowing that let's white knight you yep. yeah. so, white knight's a symbol I, well, I think it's while, while I'm talking I'll, I'll drop him yeah, in my biggest ahead. fear I've got a quick one for gaming biggest fear in gaming 30 frames per second oh. um, so that's <laughs> this motherfucker right here this motherfucker so, immediate fear <laughs> Uh, straight there. Biggest fear in life. Uh, I'm going to go with having my belly button touched. Ooh. True story. Oh, my True God. Story. The first thing why. we're going for when we get together, there's going to be some fingers and belly button. It's <laughs> yeah. just a weird are you an, feeling. Can, we're coming. Can you, can you, uh, like... you don't have to share this information, but are you in yeah. or outie? I'm in E. No, I'm in E. Oh, and that's what makes it worse. If it was out E, I'd, I'd feel there. I feel it's a very thin piece of skin that's easily punctured. I feel that like you're going for the umbilical immediately. Yeah. Gary. I feel like it's one of my weakest areas. It's, it's, it's kind of like it's a, a sealed. Spot. It's your spot. Gary. The juice box. I know, I just, I just Gary, say, are you sure like that. It is, it is nature's sealed anus, is what it is. And you're just being poked here. <laughs> I just don't like it. Gary, how, how are, are you sure that if it was punctured, you wouldn't like it? No, God no! It's I, I, it feels like you're literally just prodding me and giving me a tumor or something. It's a weird feeling. Like if anything touches it, it's like it just immediately sends shock waves and a horrible gut wrenching feeling through my body. Yeah, As I said, gut wrenching. All right. <laughs> yes. You get it's, abducted by aliens. That's the first place they go, man. Belly button. They went up the butt. No, no? that's just. Belly button. No. You haven't seen you know Fire you know in the Sky? I've you know seen that movie. Like it's made for straight I, to the belly button. <laughs> <laughs> it's not make believe. It is not make believe. No, it's that, not. Guy, Travis Walton. Man, it's Travis Walton. Travis, didn't Travis he admit Walton that he made person. the whole thing up? Not no, he didn't make it up. That really fucking happened to him. Not that I know of. I thought he admitted that he made it up in the news. No. I'll, look at, I'll look into that because if he... Absolutely not. I'm pretty sure I would have heard about it if he did, but... I'm not saying you're wrong about that. Briar is throwing but like, salt in the game, dude. Wilson. I used <laughs> okay. to. You can. This is no bullshit, man. Like I've been into fucking UFOs and ghosts and fucking so wacky I. shit since I've been in like fourth grade. <clears throat> you know what I mean? And when Fire in the Sky came out, man, <sighs> like that. That's the first place they go, Gary. Right through the belly button, man. That could be why you have a subconscious fear of this. Maybe, maybe you've been, been, been abducted. Maybe I'm like naive. Taken, the the TV show directed no, by Steven you know Spielberg. What? Part of it got triggered by the first Matrix movie when I watched it, when Keanu gets that bug in his bar, the oh, yeah. prawn that crawls in that shit. Yeah, that no. metal thing, yeah. That was yeah, nasty. a little shrimp that goes into it and suck it out. Yeah, man. Cyber it's shrimp. Just, I'm, Cyber I'm feeling shrimp? like, like my, my butt was like puckering as we're talking about this. It's just like it's a general <laughs> sensation of like, I feel like I need to protect it. Like, if I could wear like a, a fanny pack around my belly all the time, I'd do it. <laughs> Dude, um, I know that feeling. Okay, so like right where your rib cage ends. Oh, the little bit sternum? of metal. The yeah, the, the sternum oh. right there. Like if if Sam places her hand right there, like I'm literally like, oh my god, like I don't like it there. I don't like it yeah, there, and it gets yeah, to yeah. the points where I'm almost like suffocating. Like I can't breathe. I'm just like really uncomfortable. So I can no kind of relate to that. Yeah. The only my, place my, my wife can't touch me is on the ass. Any other where any other place is fine. Chico, do home. not. Touch my ass. Even just she, like no. on the side, like a little love tap. No, a, a grab. No. She don't. She not get any ass grab on the way no. out. No. What kind really? of shit you think? All this right. Is? So when we meet up, when when we do the revolver live meetup, first thing, poke Gary in the belly button. Next, turn right around, smacking that ass. <laughs> <laughs> Coming yeah. right on over. <laughs> <Whoop -ta! laughs> Yeah, I understand. I might linger a little bit too long, too. <laughs> I, I understand, you know, the, the the holiest of holes, but the, the ass cheek is just a bit of flesh. It's like hitting no, the thigh. It's not. No. So no, what about is. what about in sports, Beastly? Are you the type of guy that that you, good game? You're fighting you in the locker room, my friend. Really? So I don't play that. So we should we should we should team look, shot. Look at me, look me in Briar, the eye and tell me you think I play that shit. We we should. We should team shot Gary's crit. We should both poke it. <laughs> and then oh, just... <laughs> and then... The worst. Gary team is shots. canceling travel plans as we speak. I am. <laughs> it's happening. That's, that's like a nightmare. You guys have I've exposed my biggest fear to you in confidence. You've exploited it. I would like an asshole. That's Grant Magpie in the comment section said, Gary is a vet. <laughs> He's a vet. <laughs> he is. 
It's been sent from the future to yeah. transfer everyone into a PC player. Yeah. It's been sent from the future to transfer everyone into a PC player. The perfect <laughs> reality. Like I, the I do you. identify That's with how the Vex, Vex take over. <laughs> let, let me, let me yeah. real quickly go through one or two things that scare me. My subconscious fear uh, would be dying before my wife mm. and then she gets remarried and then I expect a threesome in heaven, which would send me to hell. So I don't know how, I don't know how that would work. Wait, you wait, know? What part of the fear is your fear? There's so many layers to that response. It's all is it of dying it. before her or her remarrying? Or no, no, three look, which all one of it? it's a, I'm going to explain to you. All of it's a fear. First of all, no one wants to die. Dying before your wife and then you go to heaven and then you realize she got married to some other guy. You're like, wait, wait, wait does she love him no, more no. than me? You're cool to die as long as you witness her dying first. That's what you've just said. <laughs> oh <my laughs> God. Don't try to flip it. Don't try to flip your my wife, fear. Just to clarify. No, I, I don't look. At least God I outlive this bitch. As long as I outlive this bitch, we're fine. That's my biggest God. fear. Oh my I've got God. to see her into the ground. So, like, hear me out. I can totally, I can kind of relate to this in a sense. Like, here's the thing, though. I can't. Sam can't die before me because I can barely take care of myself. Right. Like, do you really I think mean, like when I'm when I'm 70 years old, I'm gonna be any better at taking care of myself? I mean, it'll be like be two, three days before you follow her right behind. It's it's, it's, pretty easy, it's it's pretty easy to understand my point, Gary. I'm 10 years older than my wife, so I'm gonna die before her anyway. Me dying isn't the problem, but the realization that she marries some other guy, falls in love with him in the time that it takes for her to die, and then when she goes or he dies. And then me and this guy are standing in heaven side by side, looking at each other like, she's my motherfucker. There's going to be dudes what? lined up outside her door trying to get that beastly gamer game collection, too. Oh. Man, there's like, fucking all sorts of dudes are going to be hanging out. They're like, oh, I heard beastly died. Bullshit. What's Kate up to? Fight to the death, they man. Like, like a couple of uh, girl, got a you bunch like of video fight. games. <laughs> <laughs> she plays them. She's good at Destiny. She's a runner. There we go. She's she is a runner. A runner. Yeah, yeah. Now, fastest gauntlet runner in the raid to date. I'm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm very similar to Wilson in the sense that I'm into conspiracies, ufology, cryptozoology, and shit. But when I was a kid, we actually saw things. We lived in a house in Ohio that there were ghosts. And this is Halloween, so I'll tell a quick one minute story. My mm -hmm. mom was babysitting our cousins. They spent the night over our house in our room. I woke up in the middle of the night. My dad was at a strip club. Sorry, dad, I had to air you out on, on Revolver Live. My mom was downstairs cleaning. It had to be about one in the morning. My older brother woke up with me, and we decided to go downstairs to hang out with mom. It was one in the morning. My cousins were on my bed sleep, my three female cousins. We walk into the hallway. Directly across from my bedroom is my mom and dad's room. And sitting at the foot of her door was a shadow, what people call shadow persons. It was a shadow person sitting directly at the foot of her door, like right across from us, three feet away. And it looked exactly like her. It had the outline of my mom. And there was no lights on in her room, but this thing was so black that you could see completely around it. It's like a supernatural darkness. It's like if you looked into the woods and you could see something walking in between trees, it was that kind of darkness. So me and my older brother shot down the stairs screaming because we saw we ended up terming the black Cassandra. My mom was downstairs vacuuming. We told her story, cried for a long time. She gave us some candy to calm us down. But unfortunately for us, she sent us back upstairs about 40 minutes Fucking later hell. and back told to us Cassandra. To, yeah, that's what we called it. My mom's name is Cassandra. Uh, but she sent us back upstairs and she wouldn't follow us. And so as we were creeping back up the stairs, we were holding hands and my brother was looking in my mom's room. He was in front of me. So as soon as he saw that it wasn't there anymore, he let go of my hand because he's an asshole. <laughs> and uh, he took off. He ran into the room without me, and I ran in about you know maybe a second or two behind him. And our door slammed and hit me in my head, and it caused a cut in the back of my head. It's still there today. Um, but my mom came upstairs. My cousins woke up. I was on the ground crying, and that was the story of the Black Cassandra. We lived in this house. There's a lot of really messed up things that happened there, and I swear to you guys, I'm not lying about the story. Man, that's I. <clears throat> I've experienced some things. I've never had anything like visual like that. Like, um, oh man, this house. Long story. This long story short, my buddy's dad bolted a long time ago, just up and left the family. And uh, his mom left and moved to a different house. And his dad had all these bills paid at this house out in the middle of nowhere. We used to party there so hard in high school, dude. We had a whole house to ourselves. Um, some of my buddies, they were more outgoing than me. They were like sports guys, and they met some girls from another town. And long story short, we had a party. 
and a buddy and one of my girls were upstairs hanging out and this other girl went upstairs to check on her friend make sure she was all good and we just heard screaming so and like this house was fucked up dude like heavy air constantly felt like you walked into an unwant like like an entire restaurant stopped eating and just looked at you yeah like that's the feeling you got everywhere in the house we went upstairs like what's the deal you know people screaming bringing down the vibe and stuff and She's like, which one of you assholes ha- has your little sister up here just sitting in the room while you guys are downstairs getting fucked up? And we're like, what are you, what are you talking about? And she's like, you're, t- there's a little girl just sitting right there on that on the end of that bed. And I'm assuming that's one of your sisters or something. And we're like, uh, you broke rule number one. You talked about the ghost in the house. You got to go. Like, you're not supposed to talk about it in the house. Like, shit just gets crazy. Every time we talk about it, like, shit would get crazier. <clears throat> it was a fucked up house, man. It was weird. We could have a whole episode on the things that we saw growing up in Ohio. Every time I go back there, I take my wife and we go back and visit these houses and I knock on the doors and nobody ever answers the door. Like, you know, there are people who live in these houses and I'm talking about last year. I went to all these houses and knock on the doors to ask people if they, they'd seen anything. So it's, it's Wait, real. You had man. multiple it be... haunted houses. Yeah, 14 Marie Terrace, 339 Noble. Uh, these houses, there are demons inside the houses. Have you ever wondered if maybe demons? you're the problem? If right? there's multiple houses here. <laughs> Listen, you, we're, we're talking about... Do you ever think about, that maybe whatever it is is following you? Well, you know, I have uh, Cherokee Indian in my family. As a matter of fact, my grandmother is full Cherokee. And uh, these things haunted my mom. And uh, they would come to us when we were kids in the form of all kinds of stuff. Our toys would wake up. Our toys would come to life and walk towards us in the bedroom. Ooh, Puppet uh, Master? I don't do li- that shit. I, little, I known, mean, little known fact, BC Gamer was actually the inspiration for the movie Toy Story. It wasn't like that. <laughs> but, you know, we saw these shadow things all the time. One came up in the bed right next to us. Uh, the clothes in my bedroom uh, scooted together and came into the form of a human being. Just a whole bunch of real fucked up stuff. <laughs> and so uh, do you have a fear of the paranormal, or is it something that more interests you now that you're older? I don't fear it at all anymore, to be totally honest. I think I know what, what it all meant for me. And, uh, you know, that's where my faith is. But, yeah, I, I don't fear it at all. I think that, you know, it kind of revealed itself because I was a child and I was innocent. I hadn't seen any trim before. Nothing. I trim. You know, I, yeah, I, I was completely <laughs> unexposed to the world. I was four or five years old. And uh, these things, they took great pleasure in scaring the bejesus out of a child multiple times. Me and my brother would see this stuff all the time. There was a group of people in my basement having a conversation, and there was nobody there. And uh, my mom grabbed us, and we ran outside, ran to the neighbor's house, and the police came. And there was no one there. So, I mean, these houses were just terrifying. I mean, Sorry I can pro- probably round off this um, topic with the most terrifying story from, from my childhood. Um, <laughs> you know, we, can't wait. No, it's the next, you know, laying there at night, woke up here, loud moans, rattling shakes coming from the room next door, creep in, find out what's going on. Oh, God. They were were fucking no ghosts whatsoever. Walked in on your parents doing the deed. Look, Gary. Parents were were fucking, man. Terrifying. That's terrifying. Is it like this, Gary? What about, uh, what about, terrifying, man. What about uh? What about you, Briar? I don't think you did. You, you didn't go, did you? Uh, for games, it's just losing game saves, and it's it's the worst. <laughs> like I am, I am like a habitual game saver. Like if I have the option to do quick saves, I'll have like by the end of a game, I'll have like two hundred. <laughs> like with Witcher three, yeah, I have so many quick saves. It's just this long ass list. I because I, I I think I can't remember what game it was, but when I was a kid, I lost one, and it just pissed me off to no end. And I've ever since then I've just been like scared I'm gonna lose a game save. Like you know that moment when you turn off a game that auto saves for the first time, like you put four yeah. hours into it the first time you played it, and you're like, did this thing is it just gonna like start up again, or do I have to like find the save button? Like what's oh, going God. on? Here? <laughs> if only That's auto ex- auto save existed on uh, Earthbound for Super Nintendo, I got the Sword of Kings, which is like a one in like fifteen hundred chance of getting after grinding a character, uh, uh, grinding an enemy. <clears throat> and my Super Nintendo shocker, like every other console I've owned, was fucked up, so I had to turn it upside down and put a book on it <laughs> to get it to read the cartridge. Don't ask how I figured that out. Uh, but my grandma bumped the table and it reset right after I got it. So you oh, right after oh, I got it. My God. Your grandmother was the original troll. You know that. 
she was just watching. She was like, fuck, is that the sword of... That is. Bump. He looks like he got it. Let me go in there and knock that shit over. She's like, he's playing games with psychic abilities. Oh, it's devil. My, so my <laughs> biggest fear in life, like outside of gaming, without a doubt, is that I'm home alone with the kids and something fucked happens to one of the kids. Oh. Mm. It is, like, and my wife's not there. Like, to I don't know why it, it terrifies. Not to fix it. To justify or to like validate that it wasn't my fault, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want that shit on me. <laughs> I'm so Can relate. Scared. <laughs> oh my god, that's a good one, Briar. Like the kids aren't allowed to mow the <laughs> lawn when when my wife's not home. Like, no, you can't mow the lawn. You got all the right motivations there, Briar. <laughs> As long as she can't say it was my fault. Fucking, I'm so fucking scared to let him do shit when I'm when I'm home alone with him. That's I mean, that's an understandable fear, man. I mean, that's exactly how my dad was. Uh, my stepdad was with us growing up. You know what I mean? Like he uh, we'd we're, could we could we go there's this junkyard out in the middle of this woods that we'd go play at and stuff and I'd be like, Can we go to the junkyard? He's like, No, your mother's not home. I'd be like, well, she'd send if something happened to us, she'd send you. No, nah, I don't care. Your mother's not home. Go the throw sticks guy. in the creek. You know, whatever it is. Smart guy. Just go outside and count the bricks on the wall and come back in and tell me how many there are. Um, yeah. The same, as, just, same as last week, Paul. Yeah, right. Just, just just double check for me. Just count the bricks on the wall. I find myself leave the more older that I get, I find myself leaving my house every morning going, Did I turn the coffee pot off? Did oh, I leave yeah. something on? And when that l- little mental needle gets threaded right into your your brain, there's no getting it out there. And it's even worse when I'm leaving my studio. I'm like, did I turn the propane off? Did I turn the gas off? Did I turn my kiln off? Which is essentially a box sitting at 1,100 degrees. You know what I mean? Like, So every day when I leave my studio, I have to make a short video on my phone <laughs> Going gas off, killing off, doors locked, this and that. Like it's like a checklist for me, so that when I'm like, did I turn that off? I could look at my phone and be like, it's okay, a smart I did way it. to cover your ass, man. That's <laughs> it's a stoner way of doing it because you just can't remember shit. So I got to make a video and be like, oh, that's exactly how it. So, All right, so I'm guessing since we've covered those bases, we'll move on to the next topic, and it's my topic, and it's about the Nintendo Switch, as you guys know. Uh, one of the later games that have come out for the Switch is getting rave reviews around the world. It's Super Mario Odyssey. And I, I've been fighting my wife and kids. Actually, my wife's in there playing it right now to get more time with this thing. Unfortunately, we only have one Switch. But my thoughts on the on the Switch are this. I hate loving the Nintendo Switch. And what do you what does that mean? The Switch is an awesome concept. It's an indie machine. It is a retro console. You know, all the SNK arcade games, limited exclusives. But some of the best games I played all year, like Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild, are Nintendo Switch games and Game of the Year contenders. Um, nice ports incoming, like uh, Wolfenstein 2, Skyrim, and Doom. But my issue is I've spent limited time with my Switch, but I absolutely love the time that I've had with it. Uh, and, and the thing is, for me, it, it comes down to the top-tier AAA type of games on the Switch for gamers to have access to right now. Of course, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is amazing. Everybody loved that game. But for me, Mario Odyssey is an even better experience. And so now I'm putting in more time playing the Switch. I took it to work with me today. I took it yesterday. Uh, you know, it's there for me. It's a portable machine. It has a AAA kind of experience on it. But I hate loving it because it's like an oxymoron. Those two two ideas don't coincide very well. It's something that you have limited time playing or you've played very little of, but you love it so much because the AAA games on it are so amazing. Have you guys run into this experience at all with your Switches? I don't even know what you're talking about exactly. You love it because you haven't had time I, to play it? No. I hate loving it. I hate loving it because to me, those those ideas clash. The idea that I play little, very little of it, I've played very little that, of it. Do you think that the reason you love it is because you haven't played that much of it? Like it's still like uh, you know, it's still fresh and new? Not necessarily. I mean, I probably put 15 to 20 hours in on Zelda. Um, and, and it was a great experience, but other things pulled me away. But now that I'm playing Mario Odyssey, other than Destiny 2, no other games has pulled me away from Destiny. But Mario has. Um, I've probably gotten six hours in since the game came out playing it on my Switch. And I think it's an amazing console, especially with more and more games like that. But 
I feel like if it had more experiences like Mario, like The Legend of Zelda, it would take over my life. And I hate the fact that it's so amazing, but there's just so few games on it for me that have made me gravitate toward it as like, you know, my, my main console or one of my main consoles. But when we, when we see games like The Legend of Zelda, games like Mario Odyssey, it just completely encompasses all, all our time as gamers. That's a game you definitely need to try, Briar. That's my thoughts on it. I hate the fact that I love it because it's I don't it, understand it's why you hate that you love it. Like I, that doesn't add up to me. Is it because you don't is it because you don't have the time as much time as you'd like to invest into it? <clears throat> Look. Like are you loving it so much but day-to-day life is just getting in the way from keeping you this, from This this sums up it? what this sums up what I'm saying. I've spent limited time with my Switch this year, but the games I played on it are magical experiences, and those two facts clash very hard inside my head. It's like uh, there hasn't been enough to keep me on the console, to keep me gravitating towards it. Oh, Every, okay. I get it now. Okay, I, yeah. I, I get, I get what you, you're saying, but for me, like, the Switch is easily my favorite console of this generation, like, easily my favorite. Because I've got my PC, and my multi-plats, that's where I do my, what I'd call seri- serious gaming, if you want to call it, my traditional gaming, conventional mm-hmm. gaming. The Switch, I am buying so many games for, and obviously collecting all the Joy-Con colors, which is just a fetish of mine. Um, I just, I like, I like the form factor of it. I like the portability of it. As a Vita fan, it really speaks to me in the fact that I can take this anywhere and I can plug it in if I want to. The games that it's got are all quality games. You st- you're hard pressed to find bad games on it. There might be out of the 200 titles there are, there's probably 10 bad games, games that I think are just not good games. I wouldn't Mm. say I play the other 190, but they're there. You're getting great ports, but the indies that it's got are fantastic. Oxenfree, which isn't a Switch game, but I played it on the Switch, was stunning. You know, a point-and-click adventure works so well with a touchscreen. It's fucking obvious, but it does. You know, it's, as I said, the fact that it's immediately a two-player machine, very social in the fact you're not uh, not isolated into having a single player on it. It's got such a diverse library of games on it. I mean, I, I think the way that the momentum's building on the Switch, it's going to be something that people are going to be spending more and more time on. Um, it, it, it's the most different and unique console offering. PlayStation 4 and Xbox One are not differentiators to me. They're just iterations on the same things we've always had. Agreed. To me, the Switch represents the future of the console. The fact that it will be this um, ubiquitous thing that you can just pick up and play anywhere, whether that's through cloud or other technology, just the fact that it becomes um, something that straddles the the mobile and the conventional gaming. I think it is the future of gaming, at least a glimpse into it. And, and that's why you have, you're like Russell Crowe. You have a beautiful mind, Gary. Um, and I mean that in the best way possible. For me, like your love for the Vita, I can appreciate, but I don't have the same love. And it's probably the same way for the Switch. A lot of the games that you played on the Switch I've seen, and it, they just haven't been my type of games. But with with the changes coming to the Switch and games that are you know announced for the Switch and things coming down the pipeline, those are more my type of experiences. And so for me, I still arrive at the same place that you do, but for a different reason. I'm not really an indie guy, and it's not because indies are a bad word. It's just that I've never really been that guy to sit and play tons of indie games or or little uh, point-and-click adventures. I've always been more of a AAA or a, a story campaign or well, first-person shooter it's type of game. It's going to be interesting to see this this holiday season. Doom is – I don't know if it's coming this holiday season. I'm buying that. Doom yeah, is coming I, out. Uh, they said it. Wolfenstein 2 is coming out for the yep. Switch. And Skyrim is coming out for the Switch, so I'm going to have all three. Depending of those. on how successful those games are on the Switch, I think will will make the decision for other developers: should we put out, you know, AAA games on the Switch? Because they, you know, a lot of studios or developers don't want to do that, right? Because they've, you know, they've had problems with putting games out on Nintendo systems in the past. So it'll be interesting to see how well those games perform. See, and for me, it's it doesn't come down to a frame frame rate thing. It doesn't come down to the best resolution. It comes down to the ability to take it, you know, to play it on my TV the way I was doing Mario Odyssey, mm-hmm. and pick it up and play it. Like right now, my wife's in the living room watching us live, but she's also got the Switch in her hand. And to me, to be able to take a game like that, Doom, which I loved, and of course Wolfenstein Two, which you guys say is like the bee's knees of. of 
modern gaming. I've watched some, you know, some videos on that. Of course, it's not going to be the same experience uh, on the Nintendo Switch. There are going to be some compromises. And if they're able to compromise in a way that the game is still playable and enjoyable, and it still looks halfway decent on, you know, a, a 4K monitor, 4K TV, and, and you can take it on the go, you know, you can get up and take it to work, or you can take it into your bedroom or into the bathroom or in your car. To me, that that is what makes it intriguing and enjoyable and special to me. So I mean, that's, that's it's interesting because we're almost coming at it from two different angles because they're the things that I'm least interested about on the Switch. The things mm-hmm. that I can play anywhere else, like Doom and Wolf, to me, I feel like I'm going to get a compromise experience on the Switch. Like the Nintendo exclusives, I'm not going to get anywhere else. The the physical buttons on indie games and mobile ports and other things that I'm I'm seeing happen are fantastic. The strategy games, that that kind of stuff there. I, just, I like it when Nintendo are Nintendo and try to be unique and provide something that's not available somewhere else. To me, if you give me a really low res, watered down, poor frame rate Wolfenstein, I'm going to have an infinitely worse experience whether I can take it on the go or not to playing it on a conventional platform. So it's interesting that you, they're the things that you're looking forward to, which are probably like yeah, I, you know, for me, I, I'm a console gamer, so you know, you never, ha- you can't really miss what you never had. 200 hertz monitors and all that stuff. I mean, it's something that is outside of my experience. So those concessions I'm willing to take. Many people are. It just a, look, like you said, you can play Doom anywhere, but you can't really play it anywhere. You can only play it on a TV or at your PC. And for me, the ability to actually really be able to take it anywhere is a reason to buy it on the Switch. It might look a little different. It might run slower. It might not be the same pedigree or the same product, but it'll be a, a comparable product, and, and it'll it'll look good enough, and people are going to buy it and enjoy it and be able to take it on the go. And to me, that ability to be mobile, really mobile with AAA games for the first time is something that I've been looking forward to for a long, long time. Yeah, I mean, like, one thing Nintendo is good at is – Figuring out how to make something different that sets them aside from the rest of the competition. Um, they did it with uh, very successfully with the Wii. Um, not so successful with the Wii U. Um, they tried. It kind of seems like the Wii U was what the Switch was kind of supposed to be. But they just kind of said, You're right. fuck it, and fell back on it. And they're like, we'll just make it a in-home portable you know, type gaming device. And sometimes some of those games you couldn't play without one or the other, the TV or some of them you had to have both. But my point being, um, I, what gets me the most excited about getting a switch here soon is um, not portability because when I'm out and about, I have this real big paranoia of dropping it, fucking it up, getting it stolen, all the above. Um, or just being a distraction at work. If I take that thing to my fucking studio, like I don't have a boss at my studio. Like I'm, I pay rent. I'm responsible for getting shit done every day. I could fuck off all day. I could do whatever I want any day, but I'm not going to get paid. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm, and I still have to make stuff and then I still have to sell it. So it, the portability thing of it is really cool. It really is. It's just not for me because I already, I get so, um, easily distracted in my life but what has me the most excited about getting a switch in the future is uh just great great games like zelda and mario that you're never gonna find anywhere else man never you're you're never gonna see those games well i mean sure you can play mario some of the old marios on your pc and stuff that are that are ported, you know, by someone, but you're never going to see an official Nintendo release on anything else but a Nintendo product, <clears throat> you know. And they, when they put that fucking Nintendo seal of quality shit on there, I mean, can it's you remember? Real. Can you remember any Nintendo game that came out and was a miserable, uh, not miserable flop as far as sales, but like a miserable flop as far as uh, production, production, or just being unplayable? Never. Nintendo is on point, you know. <clears throat> And we haven't talked about this at all. We talk about Destiny 2. Mario Odyssey is truly the the, the the generational jump that I've always wanted since Mario 64. It feels like the true step up from that game. And has so many of the same uh, characteristics and the way that you play and all things you can do. It just looks light years better. And it really, it, it's, it's what Mario Sunshine wanted to be. 
And I'm so happy with it. You know, that's what Nintendo's pedigree is. It's what they've always done. And I love it, man. If they continue to do this, the Switch will easily become one of my favorite consoles to play. It's currently my second favorite because there's really nothing on the Xbox to play. But, um, yeah, I'm loving it. Briar, you've been kind of quiet. I think that, you know, your Viking helmet is holding your mouth shut. Any thoughts? I, I don't have a whole lot of sh- stuff to share. I don't use it portably very often. As portable as I get is I bring it down to the couch and play while I watch shitty TV shows. Um, and I, <laughs> I played a lot of Zelda, but that's really all I've played on that. I, I tried to play... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I tried to play a couple other games, but they just didn't capture my attention as much as I had hoped. Uh, most recently, I down, out, downloaded Sonic Mania, and it was fine, but it was, you know, I played Sonic when I was a kid. I'm, I, I, those kind of games just don't capture me the way they used to. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you have any desire to try Mario Odyssey? I probably will try it. I, I guarantee I won't finish it, though. I, I haven't finished a Mario game probably since Mario 64. Yeah. Oh, you didn't finish that. Okay. Got you. Got you. Totally totally I have top. finished Mario 64, but it's, that was probably the last one I finished. You mentioned okay. before you're a, you're a fan of golf or a uh, lapsed golfer. Golf Story, man, that's a great game. And that's only like $10. I played it. I played it. I played it for, I don't know, an hour and a half. And I was like, okay. Really? Yeah. You just, don't like that. The RPG element was so quaint. It's like proper Australian humor in it. I really enjoyed it. I that's probably know, why he didn't like, get it. It was... It was it was f- fine, you know. Like it was fine, <laughs> but it just didn't it didn't <laughs> grab a hold of me. It didn't hook me in. Um, and when I, like when I when I really get grabbed by something, I just like kind of mainline it until I'm done with it. Um, and I don't know. There's I've tried a lot of different things. Farmville or not Farmville? Was that Stardew Valley? Stardew Valley. You know, everybody's been ranting and raving about that game. I played it for I don't know two hours. It's like. This is boring. For you. <laughs> it, isn't it yeah. amazing, Briar, that we all have different motivations yeah. for the games that we play? It, but my, my time was Zelda. I loved it. And I loved playing on the Switch because I could play it on the TV. I could grab that thing, go play in bed. I could grab it, you know, grab it, go. I play out on the back deck with my feet up on the banister. You know, I, yeah. I love being able to just play that, that goddamn game wherever I was going. Yeah. I thought it was fantastic. Um, but it's just, you know, the games, you know, I've talked about this before. Nintendo doesn't make games that really appeal to me that frequently. Uh, the last couple of Zeldas before Breath of the Wild were kind of just like, eh, not my thing. Um, you know, the game I'm most excited about that Nintendo's made recently is out for the 3DS right now. It's the new, uh, the new uh, Metroid game. Yeah, uh, Samus yeah. Returns. Yeah, I mean, Link Between me, Worlds I... was dope. Yeah, Briar loved that game. Yeah, I loved it. That was a really good one. Yeah. I tried to transition what I play um, a lot more because I used to be all about the, the triple A's and the big flashy games. And my website that I frequent like the most is how long to beat. Um, so I'll go on that website all the time and a game that I'll buy or like consider buying, I'll plug into how long to beat and nothing makes me happier than seeing a game that's under five hours in length to beat like something like inside. I don't know if you played inside and limbo, but they're like four hours. Yeah. Same here. Um, inside is amazing. Four hours. You'll get through it. Oxen free again, six hours maximum. You'll get through it. Enjoy it. So for me, the switch is a lot of things that I can completely get into and immerse myself in a, in a great story for six hours and be done with it and put it down. And when you're playing games like Destiny and Overwatch and things that have no end and are persistent, it's a great palate cleanser to pick up a game and know that I've got a feasible end in six hours. I don't have to then commit my six months of my life to this title, investing in it and developing. But, I mean, that's my own personal taste. Uh, I'm like why. this with movies, with books, with TV shows. You have to hook me in the first hour or you've lost me forever. You know, like when the the worst thing somebody could tell me about a game is that you have to kind of grind through the first 10 hours before it gets good. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, man. <laughs> How'd you get hooked on Game of Thrones then, man? I thought the first fucking two, three episodes were fucking boring. Uh, the first shit. episode, right off the bat, he chopped somebody's fucking head off. I was like, yeah, I like this. It sounds like Gladiator. <laughs> I still haven't seen one episode of that, Briar, after all these years. I knew the inevitable was coming with Ned Stark, though, just because just every movie that fucking guy plays. So I knew from the beginning. <laughs> but I. <laughs> um, I, I I I don't know how I got into it because I did not like the first. I mean, to be honest, I should be asking myself that question because I I'm lucky that I stuck with with that series because I thought the first couple episodes were boring as shit. 
No kidding. I, think I, it goes I back. loved it, right? Didn't Bran get pushed off in the first season, episode and two? There was plenty yeah. of fucking before that as well. It goes yeah, back to how's the, the fucking? Oh, wait, it's pretty good. The fucking. Oh, there's right. fucking. Good in <laughs> You're right. I strayed from my own rating system. I apologize. I appreciate This is why we're friends, because you guys keep me in check. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, maybe I'll give it a shot. But shout out to Stranger Things too, guys. We've been watching that. Oh I my just beat, fucking I just god! That. I just finished that last night. I was like, oh. you know, you watched it good if you said you beat it, Brian. Four, <laughs> I watched the first four episodes night one, and oh my, my wife god. made me stop watching, and I finished it last night. Me and Wilson were playing. Uh, me, Wilson, and Gary were playing uh, Destiny, and Wilson's Wilson's like, okay, I gotta go watch. Uh, we got two things. episodes left. I'm only gonna watch two episodes, though. So, like, you know, I'll, I'll be back on Destiny later. I'm like, okay, man, I'll be back too. Wilson stopped Gone. watching two two episodes. I fucking mainline that shit to the end. Yeah. <laughs> we were going to just watch one or two episodes yesterday, and we ended up doing it till one in the morning. And yeah, every now... episode ends with a cliffhanger. Yeah. yeah. I mean, geez. We were, I was watching it right until I came in here for the pre-show to talk so to you guys. So good, right? Yeah, it's it so me, good. Oh my god! Every episode ends on a cliffhanger, <clears throat> and I, I'm the type of person, man. Like, I'll sit down and I'll fucking power through a whole season. That's but, the best way to watch things, man. Netflix is a shit. It is, but like yeah. uh, me and Sam also like having something to watch each night because, like, mm-hmm. we'll get on. She'll play Overwatch. I'll play Destiny or something, and or we'll both like play Destiny, habit, man. Yeah, but like we'll both play Destiny or something. But um, sometimes like. Just knowing the other person in, in the house is enough, but sometimes we also like to like have something to do in the same room, and Stranger Things has been really good for that. I fucking love that show, and the, can I tell you my favorite thing about it is that it takes place in the 80s. It's not this modern yeah. setting where as soon as something happens, everybody's yeah on their cell phone. And <laughs> they all of nail sudden, it, too. Like Everything yeah, about so it is real. the 80s. The music is perfect. The locations are perfect. The cars, the clothes. The props. The prop, all the props. Like, even if they, ha- if they have a Three Musketeers bar, that it's rapper looks like rapper. it's from the fucking 80s. Yeah, but the best thing about that, about that show new, is fucking Steve. Steve is the <laughs> best, man. Steve. I need to watch it at some point. The, the latest show that I've um, mainlined has been Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty is like, the only thing that I could consume the whole thing like season three dropped and i was like just eat it like everything you should definitely in watch it gary it's really i might do i mean i don't know really I, I don't like many series i've got a weird taste in in stuff like i watched dad of light and enjoyed that um which was a cool cool thing about final fantasy um i didn't like uh, breaking bad and a lot of people like that what? so like, my my taste in what the hell's wrong with you yeah I, I don't like serious what? stuff like i don't like <laughs> serious programs I just, dude, I just don't like him. You I mean, like, I can podcast. respect your decision, but fucking Breaking Bad, dude, yeah, that shit mind. was baller. Uh, he's gone. He's gone. We lost Briar. No, he didn't. He's right there. What are you talking about? I thought he was going to walk off. I thought that was a, an Oh, he was, about to, <laughs> he was about to go? You don't like Breaking Bad? No, I'm just, like, mic. sweating to death under this fucking plastic helmet. <laughs> his head I is saw, breaking I, bad I, underneath the helmet. I saw Wilson take his costume off. I'm like, I'm, I can do mine, too. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, dude. Fucking yeah, I'll just... Burning up. I'll, take, I'll take mine off in a minute, just mid, mid-stream. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just... It didn't do it for me. I mean, we've all got different tastes and stuff, but, like, Narcos, I tried to watch, didn't enjoy it. Breaking Star Bad, a little hit or miss tried to too. watch, like all of that stuff, like where it's like something that's serious and it's it's not like, I like fun stuff. I like to be entertained with fantasy and wizards and fucking elves and, you know, like, that's why I like elves. The Witcher and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's why I like The Witcher because it's all fantasy and like the Lord of the Rings shit and stuff like that. And I don't know, for, for me, if it's if it's set in the real world, I kind of lose interest real, real quick. And Stranger Things, I've heard some wizards and no, fucking no. magic happens and stuff. No. Is it not, not really. no magic? No, it's more, let me just, without spoiling anything for anyone watching anything, if you have never seen Stranger Things, it has a great cast of characters that takes place in the 80s, and it's basically a mystery with some sci-fi elements to it, but it's mostly, from what I've ascertained, it kind of dabbles into potentially like parallel universes. And that's... That's imagine a imagine a movie made by Steven Spielberg in the eighties, like E. T. or something, made into a series. Yeah, uh, and you, you pretty much get the gist. It's of it. so good. It is. It doesn't even really feel like a series. You kind of nailed it earlier, Brad. You're like it just you feels like it a long movie. Yeah, yeah. It feels it feels like a long, 
you know, a nine hour, eight hour, you know, the acting movie. is superb. They, they have children actors who absolutely nail it. The script is great. The score is, Oh my God. That's fucking that's outrageous. Uh, it really is. Yeah, wow, I think Hugo really called it out perfectly, man. It's Goonies meets X Files. Yeah, that works. That, that perfect, works. perfect. Hugo's Nailed the it. fucking man. Nailed Hugo. it, Hugo. Fucking Hugo. Hugo. Fucking Hugo. Where do you go? Hugo. Hugo. He's my British bagel, by the way. Hugo Here, is my <laughs> English muffin. He's my British bagel. Who's your scone? I want to know that. Um, Trid is my UK crumpet. Oh, crumpet. <laughs> Why are we all confectionery products to you? <laughs> That's a good question. They're all beautiful. It's a great. It is a really good question. They're all beautiful. That's why. Bunch of tasty motherfuckers, man. Mm. <laughs> Shit. Accent. Oh, it's hey. Delicious. Yo, Can you be who, like my who? Midwest bean burger or something? I don't know. Bean burger. <laughs> Can you be when my fucking chili cone? Chili cone. Chili cone. <laughs> when we play uh, Destiny with Hugo, Brian's my I, I East said... Coast chili cone. That has to happen. <laughs> When we played Destiny with Hugo a few weeks ago, I said he was Gary's nice brother. Because Gary's, Gary's so nice fucking mean. Gary's nice brother, that's right. Yeah. Oh, no. that's Gary's perfect. so fucking... You guys, you watch this show. You know how fucking mean Gary is. And just the cold, so evil that anybody bitter tried to play on the console. This show. He, um, I think I kind of threw everybody back with my Gary impression last week in the party when we were perfect. doing the raid. I think Hugo, uh, you even said it, probably. you're like, I thought he was in the fucking party for a second. <laughs> yeah. I can't do it on the spot, but like, no. I'll, at some point, to, I'll bust it out. You have to channel it at some point, yeah. It's got to be really quiet and like sultry. <laughs> Just generally irritated at the company. That, that kind of works too. It helps to curse 30 frames. I mean, it adds to the reality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who put this thing in about loot boxes? I don't know. Why Anyone? Ask? Was this Wilson? It, it was me. Okay. Well, let's go with it. What's up with loot boxes? Loot boxes. Loot boxes are as popular as ever. There are literally loot boxes for almost anything you can think of. As a gamer, I love loot, and I was wondering if you guys have ever subscribed to a loot box. What did you like get? Like a physical was it, one? Like a, yeah. Did you, like a loot crate did, kind of thing? Yeah. What did you get? Was it worth it? If not, if you haven't done it, why? And what are some of the strangest boxes you guys have seen so far? I only know of one. Okay. Oh, really? There's tons of loot boxes. Is there? I only know of yeah. loot crate. Like, oh. Loot crate's the only no, one I could think you, of. You mean like loot boxes, like in game? No, no. I'm talking about like loot crate. I'm talking about those type of loot boxes. <laughs> they send you, you actually... shit in the mail once a, once yeah, a yeah, I've never done a loot crate or anything like that. Really, the only thing that I used to send away for in the mail was um, in Nintendo Power, every issue, they'd give you these little PowerPoint stamps. And then. Um, you would look at the back of the Nintendo Power at what was available, and I saved up enough tokens to get like the um, GoldenEye 007, the wristwatch, where it had like your armor on one side and your health on the other, and then it had like a little laser pointer, like it was like a like the laser nice. watch. Love it. That was dope. That That's was cool. pretty cool. I felt like hot shit when I showed up to school the next day with that, and then nobody knew what the fuck it was. <laughs> Like Not a plebs. single soul. Yeah, <laughs> uh, my bad. At first, yeah, right. Bunch of plebs. Gold nine. Come on. Um, but for a second, I thought you were talking about like loot boxes in game. I was like, oh, dude, I could go on for fucking ever about that. Yeah, shit. I, I didn't. I didn't want to say loot crate because loot crate is actually a thing. But there, there yeah. are different loot crate style. Gotcha. Uh, you know, subscriptions. There's like Geek Fuel. There's the J.K. Rowling's oh, uh, Wizard J.K. World. J.K. Rowling. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you like, can get not stuff Harry from Potter, him. just shit from J.K. Yeah, Rowling. Yeah, it's, it's like, J.K. Rowling's <laughs> Wizard World crate for $34. I think plus. that's Henry Rollins' brother, right? J.K. Rowling. <laughs> <laughs> if she sends you just like fucking used earbuds and just shit like that, like what do you get from her? Like, Well, I mean, I'm looking at one of the boxes right now. You get um, one of the pop figures from the film, uh, Wizard World Gloss Dictionary. Um this Looks is like all some Harry, shit. Po Harry this is Potter people sending socks. you shit you don't need in the mail. Yeah. This a is, this is a <laughs> that's, that's the point. They, there's so many of these boxes for virtually they have bark boxes for people who have dogs. They're they're boxes for cats. Oh, um, I take it back. I have gotten one. We got snack crate. <laughs> we got snack crate. Of course, oh, you have food in the mail? Yeah, oh, of course. That's that's munchies, right? That's so check check it out. Uh, it was really good. We got cool shit. We got stuff from like uh, Taiwan, Japan, uh, South America, all this awesome shit. And it's then like our fifth snacks delivered through our, the mail. 
Yeah, guess what our country, our fifth loot uh, or uh, snack crate was? What? Fucking America. What? Yeah. What did you get, like, Doritos? You get from 7-Eleven? We got, we got <laughs> Route 66 potato chips, y'all. Like, and, and like, like a chintzy little taffy and, like, a fucking bullshit soda. Like, I'm like, dude, I could have got way better snacks than this right down the fucking street for a cheaper <laughs> price. So we fucking called them or, or, or emailed them. And we're like, yo, like, we're from America. Like, why the fuck would we want American snacks? I could go anywhere in the country and get whatever the fuck I want. Like... The point of this is for me to get food that is otherwise unobtainable currently. Yeah, I have the same shit yeah. there. With um, you talk about food crates. Does it count for like Hello Fresh or whatever the fuck it is? Like, oh, that's awesome. Uh, it's like yeah, you get I, dinner delivered. Yep. I tried. No, it wasn't this. It was it was something that we tried. We we were approached in a mall. Um, you know, I, I look impressionable and obviously very gullible, and uh, very delightful um, African gentleman who was Nigerian man was like uh, telling me. The boy, all these ingredients that you get for like really cheap price, like locally produced from a farmer. So what you do is you sign up to this service and they'll send you seven recipes um, each week. And then you choose which five recipes you want. And then they send you the shit to your door for those five recipes and then you cook them. So the idea is that you've got this like really cool recipes to follow and you eat fresh and you do things like that. Got you. Sounds good. Until you realize that every night you've got to be fucking Gordon Ramsay in the kitchen with this shit. <laughs> It's like they send me a load of like <laughs> herbs from the fucking thousand islands of the world and shit. And we're like, they're like, just grab your pestle and mortar and crush these things. But and is it like, it the, is it like, it's like the like, perfect oh, amount what? so that like, like yeah, we have those balanced. here too, and it's like you get like the perfect amount. You get like if you get dinner for two delivered like three times a week, then you always get a box that has exactly what you need to make dinner. No more, no mu- no less. Yeah, yeah, it's the right ingredients, but a man with just zero a lot of fucking work to put them together. <laughs> yeah, and it's like I can get like a fucking pizza, and it goes in the oven, and I press yeah. an alarm that says twenty minutes, and I come back in twenty minutes, and I have a it delicious pizza. Like, yeah. like this is like forty-five minutes of blood, sweat, and tears to make a small chicken Kiev or something with a little bed of jasmine rice. Oh, and I've got like. Shit. 4,000 oh, utensils man. in the kitchen that now need cleaning. Things that I've had to go out and spend like $40 worth of kitchen utensils to buy to create this exotic thing. Like a fucking rice-shaped steamer. Like, who has that in the kitchen? It's like, just take your rice steam shaper and just put this in. It's like, oh, God. Oh, what are they doing? Well, like, saying, the question like, is, the, the question is. is isn't yeah. going to help you build it. Isn't going to help you make If you just have like shit like uh, knives, forks, spoons, wooden spoons, you're not going to be able to make this shit. Exactly. In my kitchen, I've got like two pans, a spoon, a mixing thing, and like some knives and forks. And that's it. Like if you can't make it with them, I'm not making it. And this thing requires like, I, I'm, I'm not kidding. They expect you to have Gordon Ramsay level equipment to make anything that they list. So all I ended up with was I'd look at the, the recipe list uh, and all the steps and I'd say, right, I can't do step two, four, seven or 12 through 15. So I'm going to do the others. And I just had like, I've still got one of the shelves in my kitchen with like several different small quantities of ingredients that are still vacuum sealed <laughs> that I'm never going to use. Like, Three peppercorns. I, I, two I have a, quest, of I have ginger, a question, Gary. Like, I'm crushed. Like, the oh, fuck is <laughs> this shit? I, and I Gary. spent, like, the, 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 the nice Nigerian gentleman got me a six month discount. So I had six months of this shit coming to my door. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, day hey, one, Gary. Gary's like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> Gary, let, let me tell you, like, like we know here in America, never trust the Nigerians, okay? Now, let me ask you a question. Was the food actually good? Did you like it? I don't know. I never successfully made it. I just had to scrape <laughs> together from the ingredients. Like if they gave me two chicken breasts and some sauce, then I could get some oven chips or oven fries and just put them in, and I'd have sauce chicken breast with oven fries, and then everything else would just go in the cupboard. Like all this weird shit. Like, have you ever? They asked me to make like crispy chili beef with like saffron leaves, and it's like, oh my god, like. It's just a man. Some hippie okay. shit. I can just picture you as Gordon Ramsay in the kitchen. Oh, this is rubbish. No, you know, trust like, me. When just, my partner uh, walked in the room, I was swearing at her like Gordon Ramsay. Like, get the fuck. Why did you buy this fucking shit from HelloFresh? It was just, just angry cooking. We've never had more arguments than every time the food. And the thing is, they deliver it on your doorstep like a fucking charity collection. They just bring you a cardboard box. The driver doesn't even knock. 
because they've now got committed that every day at 6 p.m. they're going to leave a cardboard box of ingredients on your doorstep. So you go on holiday, you've just got two weeks worth of cardboard boxes <laughs> on your drive. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Did that happen when you went on vacation? When I you forgot came to, to the States? You're meant to have a pause on it, and I forgot to pause it. It didn't happen when I went to the States. When I went to... Uh, to the Canary Islands, I yeah, I get seven days of cardboard boxes that the foxes in our area loved. They just ripped them apart into shreds. I had like, Aww. the foxes ate well. You know, they were eating saffron foxes. chicken for the week. They could manage to cook it. Apparently, I couldn't. But you guys yeah. have foxes. That's adorable. All the foxes dude. around here look mangy as fuck, dude. These ones are well fed. <laughs> hair with falling off. On driveway. It's fine. <laughs> like normally, you see a picture, like a video of a fox, and I'm like, that's so adorable. And then you see one out here, and it's got fucking no hair and it's like <sighs> looking at you and you're like I jersey don't devil want that. Dude, they like look so cute devil. like have you seen like like videos of people with pet foxes it's the most adorable thing you will ever fucking see in your life and then you come here to illinois and you see a mangy ass fox you don't want anything to do with it it's like yeah, briar's I... cat hanging out in the toilet <laughs> I mean, this isn't really <laughs> this is just a warning for anyone oh, attempting to buy one of those HelloFresh services. Just don't. Or Gusto. Gusto is the other one that does it as well. Fuck those guys too. Better have some kitchen utensils if you buy that shit. This is what Gary, Gary said. If all you got is a plate and a fork, don't buy that shit. Right? Sounds like you got to have a fucking lab. Mortar and a pestle and fucking Erlenmeyer flasks and beakers and shit. Like... Bunsen he's so, burners. Yeah, he's, he's so beat down from it. He's he looks tired from cooking still, poor guy. Never again. Not even once. All right, so the very last topic for episode 15, the Halloween special of Revolver Live, is Revolver on Tour. So whose topic is this and how would you like to present it? Mine, I'll go for it. So I'm gonna give us a hypothetical here. We, the successful podcast that we are, storming the iTunes charts with all of the reviews that have not come from our hosts, that have come from genuine viewers, um, we've decided that we're going to take this show on the road. We're going to give the people what they want. How do we do it? Where is our tour location? How long are we touring for? Mm-hmm. What are we actually going to do to entertain the masses? How would we travel? I want, I want collectively buses, here man. right we now. we got to do bus. Buses. Buses. Not just any bus. How are we going to do it? The, the bus. bus. The Wilson no, bus. No, the Wilson bus. bus. Oh, I'm shit. Bringing that yeah. <laughs> They're all like I'm fucking getting it running. We're going to be high as hell. <laughs> We're getting the bus running. We're lava be, lamps, in wrong shag carpet, fucking black lights, everything. We're taking that bitch on the road. And then when, if we need to go to Europe, we're having that bitch put on a boat. Mm. And then we'll fly over <laughs> and that thing will be waiting for us. Love it. I love it. We're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not going to ride the, the boat with the bus. We're leaving it. No, no. The bus goes on the boat. We fly over. And then we chill, and then eventually the bus will get there, and we take that bitch on the wrong side of the road in Europe because y'all drive on the wrong side of the road, so which means true. you get to drive <laughs> in Is Europe. Is tour happening in Europe, then? Is that what we're agreeing with? Yeah, it's European worldwide. Tour? Worldwide, I mean, baby. We, we can't might as well do an revolver Asian. to one continent. That's right. Asia, too. We're going we to Asia. We go to China. There's so many people there. Now, look. Yeah. If we're going to do this thing, we've we got to drive that bitch about... right over to Australia, Japan, yeah, yep. yeah Japan. Russia. Whoa. Mm-hmm. The dark side industry. of the moon. I don't want to go to Mars. Russia, especially with a bus. Have you seen those videos on YouTube? Dude, I don't yeah. know, man. Russia, I've seen some really cool... Uh, there's a Vice documentary where they go into Russia, and they basically go on a train in Siberia in summer, which is like 105. And there's adventures to be had out there. I mean, they had a dude from the KGB that just started getting shit-faced drunk with him. was like, fuck it. I'm going to hang out with you guys. And the four of he ends us. up pulling... He ends up pulling a, a gun out through Russia. Some fucked up shit is going to happen that you'll remember for the rest of your life. Exactly. There's adventures to be had in Russia. Dude. Fuck yeah. That's my well, point. I'm just going to go with the, you know, I've done, a bit of, I've done a bit of research here just to help this, this topic go along. <laughs> oh, okay. And, you know, obviously uh, our viewer base and listener base, we love and respect you all, but 58% of you are from Trump land. Um, and we want to change that, you know, we want to expand more uh, and, and, and spread this message, which is part of why the world tour is happening, you know, so we can get the message out there. The countries that we listen to or people download and listen to us from uh, include Thailand, Malta, India, China, the Philippines, Japan and Saudi Arabia. So are we uh, are we heading over to there? Where are we? What are we going to do to uh, to appeal to the masses there? What about our three people from Venezuela that are listening in right now as we speak? 
how are we going to... Oh, my God. <laughs> he came back as Trump for a second. Did you see that? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> for the audio amongst us, Beastly has, uh, has, has reappeared as he's... And Lord Briar keeps Savior. hanging up on him because he can't stand to see Trump on his screen. <laughs> oh, is that what you're doing? There we I go. Thought, I thought he was having connection issues. <laughs> like, he is. I can assure get, you. <laughs> get him out of here. Um. So, I mean, yeah, you're right. I guess we have to... How many people in Venezuela? Venezuela, we're up to four. Okay, that that's grounds to go to Venezuela. In I my think opinion. that's grounds to get Venezuela. Saudi Arabia, absolutely. I want to go to Saudi Arabia. That'd be cool. five there. <clears throat> yeah, I'm here, guys. Picking up numbers. We um, so we're gonna do it by bus. We're gonna put the bus well, on a. Boat. Women aren't allowed to drive in Saudi Arabia, so Gary can't drive there. <laughs> <laughs> I have been mistaken before. It wouldn't be I the should... first time. <laughs> Beastly, please change it, or I'm gonna hang up on you again. <laughs> just makes just makes me want to punch him i don't right? know why it just hey that face, that there's, face. It's there's, not you the avatar oh so I, i'm thinking the whole time that there's something wrong with my setup i was gonna there is you look like donald trump please change this it. is his this is his cousin okay briar i want to make you happy okay <laughs> thank Since you i see the favor i see the favoritism here <laughs> it's not favoritism it's pure fucking hate and then <laughs> boiling uh, why are you doing this beastly we have made a, promises to each other that we would not get political on this show on a plus side <laughs> on, on him. wilson how are we getting wheels on the bus how are we getting wheels on the bus i We're... thought this bus was carpets on the walls cheech and chong in the back you know, plenty of snacks. How are we comfort. getting this bus? That's that's just to get from A to B. The bus. The bus has nothing to do with what our performance could potentially be. I, couldn't the stage like break out of the bus? It could, or we could. You know, it could be like the old bus uh, stage. what is it? The old Comedy <laughs> Central stand-ups where like we come off the bus and go into like you know the nightclubs. I figured we'd be doing some sort of like stand-up, right? Like a live no, podcast, no, basically. No. Listen, I got all the ideas of what we need to be doing and how we're going to generate money. Okay. okay, people know us from doing the Revolver Live podcast. So we could do a worldwide Revolver Live podcast. We go hit state and city after city after city, go to China, go to Japan, Australia. And at the end of each live podcast, we plug our Revolver condoms and tell everybody about smacking people on the ass with the condom. That funds the trip. <laughs> so we're effectively bag mobile of dicks condom jokes. salesmen. Listen, tell a joke about a bag of dicks and then sell a bag of condoms. Dude, the condoms could be called bag of dicks. Oh, this is a genius plan. This is good. I like the fact that we've gone from respectable podcast hosts to traveling condom salesmen. Like hey, we're literally man. gonna turn up There's at nightclubs and say, yo guys, you know that machine you got in the gents? Who's who's supplying there? Because we got bag of dicks, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, if we all get to choose like the first location, what would your look the first location that you would choose be? I'll go ahead and start. Yeah. Amsterdam. Yeah, well, that's a good one. China as bag, well. Bag of dicks. More people over in China than anywhere else. So there are literally bags of dicks being used in China all the time. <laughs> I, I, I got to agree with Wilson. I think Amsterdam is where this trip gets started. Like, it but he's not doing it for the con. I, I are you kidding like me? In Amsterdam, in they're going to love our bags of dicks. But that Wilson, we won't see Wilson if we go to Amsterdam. Oh, you know, dude, you'll see me like, fine. I just gotta make a quick leave. pit stop to like get my we'll mind right. Amsterdam, <laughs> not coming back homeland. with us. Man, <laughs> there's plenty of places here in America that I can get that experience. But I figure since we're on the other side of the world, it's a for yeah. sure hookup we if we go to Amsterdam. It. We gotta start it off right. I think Amsterdam is the place to do it. That's right. <sighs> we gotta start that. We gotta put our listeners our best foot forward. Twenty-four listeners want to see us come to Amsterdam, so I think we'd be giving the people what they want. I am concerned that if the party bus reached Amsterdam, it would never depart, um, <laughs> and we would be a man down for the remainder of the trip. Like I said, well, I feel yeah, like it would be like um, Mecca for him, you know, like a spiritual homeland that he's finally found. Yeah, that's it. It'd be like Homeward Bound, the, the Revolver episode. Like we gotta to go to the next show, and I'm like, I'm thinking about staying, man. Yeah, you know, if you love someone, you let them go. So it's it's kind of one of those moments. He's going and Jimmy rigged the he, he Jimmy rigged the Winnebago so it never start up again. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 Wilson, what's up like... with the bus? Still broken, man. It's gonna be at least another week. <laughs> yeah, at least another... <laughs> We're looking at at least another like 
two to three years. <laughs> <laughs> Real slow in parts around here. Yeah, I feel yeah. like I don't know. Would we would we be doing would we be just see selling condoms or would we be kind of like, you know, like a, a jackass kind of tour? Would we be like the wild boys? Would we be doing beer enemas with each other? What are well, we going to do? Think, I think we got to continue to do the podcast because, you know, it's been so fucking successful so far. Yeah. It's happened. It happens. <laughs> at least once a day. I, mean, I, I, get, I get recognized at least once a day. Right. Well, it's, it's by, it's by, by Sam. Sam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. And the cat. I didn't say by who. Don't forget about just... the cat. That's yeah. twice a day well, right there. Only if she hasn't been fed. If she's been fed, she... <laughs> but, but Wilson, with all due respect, that's the only recognition you need, you know? I lay next to my wife, and she reaches across, you know, our baby's face and puts her hand on my beard, and she says, I'm in bed with the Beastly Gamer, and that's all that matters to me. That's what's up. That's, that's what my wife says, too. No, I thought you said that you started making her call you English Muffin. No, I don't know what to say about that. Oh, that would have been to be amazing. Fair, I mean, it's not not a day goes by when I don't come home and she looks at me and she goes, "Aren't you that guy from Revolver Live?" I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying that she, that she no. said, "Dude, she get this shit out again. of my living room." <laughs> 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 this used to be a babe layer, Gary. Now it's just a nerd cave. True that. Do that. Well, I think we I think we've got the makings of a, of a great tour. Yeah. I think you know. I think the chat need to. Uh, need to hashtag Wilson's party bus yeah. um, to get this thing going. I think if we get enough hashtag Wilson's party bus, we can maybe make this thing a reality. I think bag of dicks condoms need to be sold. Globally. Bag of dicks. Bag of dicks. And I think I what we now, it'll fund the whole trip, Gary. What we want as well. We've, we've, a we've name just, alone, the bag of dicks condom company. We've discussed this before. <laughs> you know, like when, when we give you our, uh, our voucher code, when you go onto the website, you can do like bag of dicks for it, you know, revolver life for a discount on your bag of dicks. What we need you to do is we need you to tweet us an image of you wearing it. Um, <laughs> at us, and we'll, we'll retweet that. We'll juice up your Twitter, you know, same way as if you buy a scuff from us, we're, we're down. We're down to that. Just, Wear Don't your bag of dicks, condom, listen do your to thing. Gary. Send us a picture of you wearing your bag of dicks, and we will juice that Twitter up. The winner gets Retweet. a month's supply. <laughs> <laughs> Most retweets get a month's supply. And again, month's supply is, um, I guess, uh, you know, up for debate as to how much that is in the condom. A month's supply for me is like at least one. Um, but for someone else, it might be might be a few more. Oh, that's great. We do. We need to get a, um, a uh, patent on that. ASAP. Yeah, right. There's no bag of dicks condom, and it would be the best condom for the biggest dicks. Uh, we we could provide a, a small size too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I need a wide range. No man left behind, Bob Breyer. No man left behind. You should give out business cards with little sizers. So that you know before you order. Oh, a business card. I like that with the glory hole in it. So you can sort of which you know. Yes. If you could use a wide business if you can use a business card, <laughs> it's going to be some trouble, man. Shit. <laughs> With multiple sizes on one business, business card. card? Might be more of a flyer. Yeah, it needs to be an a 8 by 10 sheet. Yeah, 8 by 11 Postage stamp would work for me quite comfortably. Um, we've got someone in the chat there, the Revolver Condom. It's not bulletproof. I think that's a good uh, <laughs> oh, <wow>. slogan. <laughs> that's a hell of a catchphrase. It's way better than kapow. That's what I would have went with. <laughs> that sounds quick, Wilson. Yeah, it's too right. right. Far too quick. You right. You right. right. Well, then I think you know for next year this had this has to be a reality. We have to, Wilson, get your bus, get the wheels on the bus, and uh, on plot it, a course for Amsterdam. I think if we 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 do it under the premise of a global tour, and if this is just effectively a trip to Amsterdam. That's kind of what we've we've reached as our conclusion. I mean, what qualifies exactly a global tour? I mean, is there just I'm traveling? I may run over to the Seven Eleven to get a Diet Dr Pepper. Is that a global you've tour? Tra- you've traveled part of the globe, right? A small part, twice, once there, once back. I mean, worldwide. <laughs> You're still craving that Diet Dr. Pepper that you've yeah. been talking about the past couple hours. You were yeah. talking about that earlier. All right, guys, let's wrap Diet this Dr. one up. Pepper. I am frying in this office right now. I have got to get out of here and go get a Diet Dr. Pepper. Well, where can they find you, Briar? They can find me uh, 
researching bagofdicks.com uh, <laughs> or on YouTube. Uh, check me out. YouTube, Twitch. Actually, look at it uh, extending or expanding my streaming schedule in the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to be experimenting with that, uh, seeing what works, what doesn't work. Uh, so the streaming schedule might get a little different than it has been in the past, but I'm looking forward to it. Beastly, I think you're muted. Oh, you guys can hear any of my laughs. You guys can find me on the Nintendo Switch, but there'll be no footage because Nintendo sucks. I got to get this Mario Odyssey played, man. That game is so much fun. Of course, I'll be playing more Destiny 2 and look forward to some new videos from the Beastly Gamer this week on YouTube. And uh, when I finally have enough time, I will start streaming. I swear it's going to happen. Yes, make it happen, dude. Gary, where can they find your more than just your sultry voice? Inside of a PC. Mm. Probably, mm. probably. No, I think for me, you can. Yeah, I mean, you can follow me on on Twitter if you want. Gary Diaz, eighty six um, underscore BT for Big Thugging, um, as we we are now promoting. I was talking um, about Bluetooth. Can, Bluetooth. Bluetooth. <laughs> Gary Diaz and Bluetooth. <laughs> can go it's for the upgraded that. No, I mean you can you can follow me on there. What what would be more exciting to me is if you hit us up on the Revolver Live podcast services. You can find us on Podbean. Please follow, like, leave a review. Alternatively, if you are a fellow Apple devotee, you can find us on the Apple Podcast Service. Again, Revolver Live reviews, comments, <laughs> likes, all of them make us incredibly horny um just do all of the above hashtag wilson's party bush hashtag bag of dicks condoms hashtag Either bc was wrong hashtag bc was wrong let's keep that one going as well keep that's alive and I, i'm <laughs> saying that shit yeah yeah hey guys, so um you, you can find me on uh twitter at re wilson uh tweet me out what's on your mind thoughts potential uh topics for the podcast we love to hear from you guys um like gary said be sure to leave us a re uh, review on uh wherever you download your uh podcast from uh we noticed last time we asked you and a bunch of you guys did we appreciate that we really um, do appreciate it keep uh keep them coming because uh there's some funny ones and if we keep getting more you know we'll maybe we'll read some of them out before uh at the beginning of the show or something make it kind of fun more viewer interactive but um yeah man we appreciate you guys being here and uh tweet us out with topics dude we love hearing from you guys that would be actually fun to read out reviews i think we should do that next week what do you think let's oh, do it i think that'd be actually pretty fun get your reviews get in guys good ones yes <laughs> fuck some like big bird get some reviews in there <laughs> all right guys i am running late for dinner with my wife um so <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> i gotta get dressed get ready to go and uh we'll see you next week bye guys Bye. Happy Halloween.